<laughs> um, Tory Lanez is not innocent, and people need to let it go. Tory Lanez okay. is not innocent, and people need to let it go. I think he shouldn't have been found guilty. Let me say that. <laughs> you feel me? Okay, here we go. <laughs> that, that means we're ready. All right. So, <laughs> I'm going to start the timer because I got the first uh, uh, go around at it. I got the first go around at it. Um, yeah, I'm going to go first in this debate. Three, two, one. All right. So, listen, Tory Lanez is not innocent. Uh, he should be in jail. He actually should be under the jail. I do believe that he did shoot Megan the Stallion. If we looked at the charges that he was um, guilty for, I mean, it, it seems clear that he should have been, you know, charged with those charges and uh, found guilty for those charges. And if anything, I think he got off on um, a more lighter sentence or, or more lighter uh, uh, set of situations than he actually deserve to be to be quite honest with you um it is actually not not quite possible but it is actually kind of good for him that he did not get hit with any sort of like uh uh real assault like I'm talking about the intention of shooting her uh he got hit with three felonies assault with a semi-automatic firearm having a loaded unregistered firearm in a vehicle and discharging a firearm with gross negligence um they had the eyewitness from the the, the, the balcony, Sean Kelly, I think was his name. He said he saw a young man, a small boy, a toddler, waving the gun from a, a, a car. Toddler is crazy. <laughs> hey, that's what it is. Saw him waving it recklessly out of a car. Um, the unregistered firearm in a vehicle, um, that, uh, hey, it's his vehicle. Even if it was a rented vehicle, it was rented in his name with his cards. Um, so that makes it his vehicle. And then having a firearm, we know how those go from those D.A.R.E. programs that they told us. If it's your car and there's a gun in it or there's drugs in it, you need to know what's in your car. It's going to be your responsibility. So that's just the way the law works. Uh, and then assault with the semi-automatic firearm, pointing it at her, having it in the direction of her, uh, threatening her with it in any way, shape, form, or fashion. That proves that that was assault with that semi-automatic firearm. All right. There we go. That is the timer. That's a long two minutes, you sure? That's a long two minutes, but hey, we get two minutes. We get two minutes. All right. Three, two, go. Uh, so when it comes to court cases, it's all about <clears throat> reasonable doubt. If you can prove without 100%, you know, uh, if you can prove with 100% guaranteed that this person shot this person. An off-rip motive. We have to establish motive. There is no motive that's been established that Tory Lane shot Megan the Stallion in the foot. Now, the other charges of possession, gross negligence, I'm all for that. You know, that's all that all makes sense. It's his gun. Negligence it makes sense. Even if Kelsey gets the gun, it's your gun. You know what I'm saying? So I completely understand that. <clears throat> but when we're talking about assault um, with with the gun. Um, for one, it's very clear from my understanding, from the things that have happened in the case, seeing Kelsey switch, she's protecting herself to some degree. She already talked to the DA and said that Tori was the one who shot her and that she saw it all, but then she gets on the stand and lies about almost everything. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So she's protecting herself to some degree. And Tori's side is already saying, hey, Megan backdoored this woman, slept with Tori, slept with Ben Simmons, slept with the baby. You feel me? So she has more motive. And we already know one of the witnesses said they seen a muzzle come out when a woman came in, out the car. And then they seen more muzzles when Tori Lanes came out the car. I think it's very clear she shot Megan. Not very clear, but I think it's reason to believe that she shot Megan because of the motive, the witness. And on top of that, you know, like I said, Tory Lanez, him having the gun and her lying. It's clear, bro. Come on. There's doubt. And if there's doubt, can't be guilty. <sighs> oh, brother. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Oop. Let me, let me let her know I'm working. Um, 
Hold on, let me not say nothing. Hold on, I just got a phone call. All right, three, two, one, go. So I think the thing that we don't understand about reasonable doubt is that there is still the court theory that if it looks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it is a duck. Yeah. <laughs> so you want motives? We got a short, already aggressive through history man, you know, He's already, he has a history of being violent, extremely violent towards other people. We have alcohol in the mix. We have a bunch of angst in the mix as well, right? And then we have uh, uh, Megan the Stallion, his scorned lover, somebody else who's intoxicated. They're having a little bit of a squabble. So we have some reason. We have some reason as to why he would do it. I mean, he's just a drunk tyrant. But even, even outside of that... Um, at the end of the day, in the beginning of the night, there's Kelsey wasn't on trial. Tory was on trial. He never st took took the stand to say anything happened. Um, the driver ran away, never testified, and even in his current little spiel as to what the fuck was going on, he never even clearly say, as far as I understand, who shot who. He never specifically said who shot who, which leaves some more holes in that case. But again. If this is about Tory proving that he did not do it, I think it would be uh, uh, his best bet to come out right and say, hey, I didn't do it because this person do it. Him not saying outright that I did not do it because this person do, did it um, puts a lot of blame in his face. And if things line up, I'm sorry, that last bowling pin is going to get knocked down. So if it is your car, there is an unregistered firearm. We do have a person say that, hey, they did see flashes in the car. But they couldn't identify, but the flashes outside of the car, they could clearly identify, and it was him. I think things line up for him being the guy that's guilty and shot Meg. That's good. That's a nice little argument right there. You feel me? All right. Three, two, go. Uh, so let's start off with Omar's argument about the history of violence. <clears throat> As a man, when we're talking about violence against men versus violence against women, those are two separate things. How you treat a man is not the same way you treat a woman. Tory Lanez has a history of uh, uh, assault on August Alsina. That does not equate to how he's going to treat a woman in a situation where all of them are drunk. We already know Megan got them kicked out the party. That's that's just doesn't make sense there. You can have a history of violence against men. That doesn't mean that you're going to be violent against women. I don't understand if we're talking about a guy that got history of violence against women. If he talking about a Chris Brown, if he talking about a, you know, a Wesley Snipes or Dr. Dre, I get that. But we are talking about a guy who got a history of violence against a woman, you know. And then as far as you know, Tory coming out and saying things, there was a gag order on Tory Lanes after the case or before the case, excuse me. So Tory didn't. It wasn't even in his best interest to, to say say that much. All he could really do is put it in his music. You feel me? And I'm not even going to quote his music because at the end of the day, it's music. You know, there's free Lance there. Regardless, like I said, you cannot 100 percent say he shot her in that car. The motive doesn't fit. On top of that, she has more motive and she lied. She 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 is a proven liar. Megan's a proven liar. Kelsey's a proven liar. They've both backtracked things they've said multiple times. Tori. All he said is he never shot her. So, hey, it's, a, it's up to you. If you want to say that's not enough for doubt, I would just strongly disagree. That's Yeah, we're leaving that with six seconds on the clock. Um, I'm going to put uh, three minutes on the clock. I don't think we'll oh, use we get all... another round. Yeah, this Pause. is the freestyle. This is the freestyle one. Oh, the freestyle. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't think we're going to use all three, but uh, let's let's get into it. You, you talked about... Um, <clears throat> You talked about him having a gag order before he went to court, which is true. I, you know, they told him not to talk. It was advised that he doesn't talk. It is in his best interest that he doesn't talk. But in court, he had the ability to speak. And even to this day, he has the ability to speak. He can write letters. He sent out pictures. He sent out pressers. He sent out everything in the world besides saying, hey, Kelsey did it. He has yet to say from his mouth, verbatim, yes, Kelsey mm -hmm. did it. The driver in the car has yet to say that, yes, Kelsey did it. So but I, why would he? 
why why why, 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 why no he... hold on hold on i'm saying why would he take the stand you know when it comes to these cases most more than likely the defense does not take the stand that's just how it works two also that could be on his legal team i think his lawyers were horrible throughout the case would you agree okay. his lawyers in the case were not good and that's on him because he, he fired, that's on him he no, no 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 that's on him but him not lawyers. taking the stand is it, I, I think that has more to do with his legal team. And on top of that, that's just usually what people do. You waive the First Amendment. On top of that, you are a guy that you know what your perception is. Majority of the jury is women. And if you get on that stand and it seems like you're making excuses, you're bullshitting, this jury, I mean, these these are normal niggas like us. These, these niggas walk the street like us, right? These ain't lawyers. These ain't you know, uh, people out there in the, in the, in the courtroom like that, this is knowing people like us. You've been called for, I mean, I, I don't know if you've been called for jury duty, but one day you will be, you know, and the same emotions you feel, especially other women feel, they're going to use that same emotion. So why would he take the stand knowing there's more than likely going to be bias on him? And it's going to look like he's just bullshitting excuses. If, if I was going to, uh, go to jail for 10 years or up to 10 years or whatever he got in the case, I would think that it would be in my best interest to at least get my side of the story out there, period, point blank. And if he was going to even down the line appeal and he felt as if it wasn't right or whatever the case may be, at some point he has to tell his story. And if he does not tell his story, then. Oh, all he told the story. You got to listen to the album. You got to listen to the album. Oh, brother. That's what you got to do. Oh, brother. If he was going to tell his story, he should have just said it. He should have just said it. It is what it is. And. Honestly, he shot her. Like, I don't even think that that's a big deal now that he's been put in jail and all that. I have a question, like Omar. That. Go ahead. Who do you think, from what you think, what happened? Mm -hmm. Who do you think had more of a motive to shoot Megan, Tori or Kelsey? Uh, Tori. What, why? What's the motive? He's an angry, drunk. Oh, here we go. Small man. So you don't think, okay, a a, do you think that, do you think that there was some type of sexual love triangle between the three? No, love triangle means can, uh, currently going on, and I think that that's not true. I, don't, I love triangle means that they're currently doing it, and I don't think that that's true. That's <clears throat> well, the time is up, so I can't even. No, go, go fin ahead. finish your point. What were you gonna say? Uh, a love triangle, more so. I'm more. I'm talking about their sexual relationship between all three of them, not like currently? together like that. You know, no, not currently. I'm talking about at that time. Their sexual relations between all three of them at that time, and one didn't know. No, that's you, but that's not it? that's not what a love triangle means. I do agree be because of what they said. Hey, there was somebody who had sex with somebody else, and then the other party uh, didn't may have not known or did not know. So, do you believe that? Uh, yeah, I believe that to be true. So, don't you think that's more of a motive to shoot somebody than just saying a nigga's angry because hey, this guy beat up August Alcina? No, oh, I was about to say, it, it could be more of a motive, but also the fact that he has a history of being violent, because I disagreed with you. If you're violent, I can believe that you could commit violence in every aspect. Like, Oh, no, I can't. I can't agree with that. How, how, how I <clears throat> think about it like this, how I address another nigga is not how I'm address a woman. And I'm talking like in certain situations. I mean, you act the same. I assume you are a, a good guy. You feel me? You in a relationship. How you address uh low or agent or whoever right it's not gonna be how you address a shorty in certain situations correct no i would address them the same exact way the same yep oh no i can't it's it, when it gets physical you address them the same i don't address them physically no not no but i'm saying if it were to get physical like if a guy were to hit you versus a woman to hit you you act the same um probably Oh no! Nah. I yeah, can't I'm not do that. Lie. I don't think that most men act like that. I I can I can hear what you're saying, and th that would probably exist if he wasn't the aggressor. But at the end of the day, he was the aggressor in the August Alcina situation. There, mm -hmm. you, you yeah. can't you can't doubt that. So no, you can he can be the aggressor, but like I don't think that being the aggressor changes that fact because you can be the aggressor, you can be the aggressor in an altercation with a woman and Hold not take that. it to a certain extent, huh? I'm saying the poll is up. The poll is up. Um, oh, yeah, go ahead. I, I, that could be true. We can keep talking. That could be true that you don't act this way. Le, le, wholeheartedly, like, you could be a, a woman beater, and that's where you stop. Hey, I'm just beating <laughs> women, and that's where I stop. You could be a man beater, and that's where you stop. I just, oh, I'm going to stop at beating men. 
But at the end of the day, when you commit violence, I believe that you have the propensity to commit violence no matter who, what, when, or why is at the forefront of this situation. So at that point, you have a history of violence. And again, it's not like they didn't see uh, the, the key witness, the witness for the defense did not see Tory Lanez uh, uh, shoot the gun. It'd be different if he said, I didn't see Tory Lane shoot the gun. How about the DNA on the gun? They did a terrible job testing the DNA, though. So <laughs> I just I, they, I agree with that. They said it was inconclusive, but I think that they just yeah, they just did a terrible job. That, now, and mind you, and I think that that's something that we can uh, honestly say for the the summary of 2023 when it comes to a lot of these court cases. Hey, the legal system isn't good, like not just because of the decisions that they make, but the actions that they get to the actions that they take, the steps that they take to get to that end result. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think everybody kind of should have gotten their DNA Very tested bad. or even that had been tampered or all these things like that. But people that's why that's kind of what I was saying in my uh in my in the video with me and my brother is that like, yo, y'all gotta stay out of these cases. Cause it's surprising to y'all that police stations lose DNA. Well, no, I don't think that that's surprising. I think it's surprising to people that don't know how the legal system works. Oh, wow. Like, and, and, and you can be not surprised, but disappointed. You feel me? Like, there's a difference between, because I can look at that Jonathan Major situation, right, and be disappointed, but I'm not surprised. Realistically speaking, I'm not surprised, you know? Now, I'm a little disappointed because of the evidence we've seen and just using my common sense about it. But, you know, it is what it is. A lot of a lot of people claim to be surprised. I'm not saying you were, but a lot of people claim to be surprised. So in this first round, by a margin of one vote, they have mustard beating Omar. One vote is crazy. He's on fire. Eight votes to seven votes. Mustard beat Omar. Okay. Damn, bro. That's 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 too easy. Hey, I, hey, I, chat. Uh, it's 80 some of y'all in here. Y'all not voting. I don't know. But chat chat knows Tori a free man. Tori should be a free man, you know. Well, not free. I'm about to say <laughs> it, it shouldn't, it shouldn't not free. be free. That nigga's that nigga, yeah. That nigga should he be was free going guy. to prison regardless because Cali don't play. So uh, he should definitely, definitely have been in jail. Um, okay. Next topic, we'll leave it. Uh, I'm leaving it over for a little minute so the whole clause can come in. If the whole clause is coming in, if it's not, psh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ba vote based off of arguments. Thank you, Cardiac, for, for reminding people. We're voting based off of arguments, not who you agree with in this conversation. All right, next one. Since you won, you can take the first go around of this. You should never whoop, <coughs> spank, beat, whatever verbiage you want to use, a child. You mm. should never whoop, spank, beat a child. Put mm -hmm. two minutes on the clock. Go. Uh, so for those who don't know, um, I'm Nigerian. So, you know, when it comes to whooping children, you know, that's something that we firmly believe in and uh, agree with, you know, and I've had my fair share of, you know, ass whoopings and shit. Uh, I don't know if I could cuss like that on, but I've been cussing like that. So who cares? I've had my fair share of, of whoopings and all that. Uh, I think that it's fair to whoop your kid. I just think that when you have the mentality that <clears throat> I'm going to whoop my kid, like you want to do it, that's the problem. That's that's the line you cross. And I think that's the problem in these debates. Me personally, I'm all for it because some kids are just stubborn. Some kids are just bad kids, man. Not bad as in like, you know, they're... Uh, they want to do bad things, but it's just in their nature. They don't have that self-control. And sometimes you got to take that next step. You know, of course, you don't have to whoop every kid. You have to pick your spots. But sometimes you you just got to got to go to that extra length. Talking doesn't always work. You know, for certain instances in certain situations, I think it should work. And at a certain age, you shouldn't be whooping them anymore. But in those younger years to establish respect you kind of have to go to that length if you have to, bro. Uh, but go ahead, Omar. All right. I'm going to leave those 30 seconds out there. I'm going to go ahead and start my two minutes. Um, yeah, I don't believe that there's any reason, shape, form, or fashion, why, justification, whatever, for beating, spanking, whooping, whatever verbiage that you want to use on your kids. Um, I don't believe that kids are inherently bad. 
I guess you can have the conversation about being born with chemical imbalances, mental illnesses, or et cetera, et cetera. But at that point, um, I would still say probably the worst thing that you could do with those types of kids is beat them. Those types of kids need help. And it's okay to admit that as a parent, you need help. And I think that that's where this conversation kind of starts is that people that beat kids, people that use physical uh, uh, means to express themselves usually have a a bad time uh, or troubles with communicating. I don't think that there's a playbook on kids. So why people, um, why people automatically default to physical violence when it comes to their kids is beyond me. It's okay to say that you don't know what you're doing. It's okay to say that, Hey, I can't handle this kid. Um, so I need to seek an outside perspective or another opinion, but I don't think it's okay to say I can't handle this baby who is acting bad, who has no idea what he's doing. Cause I think we could all agree when some of these babies are one, two, three, four, five, some of the stuff that they do is beyond the scope of understanding what they do. So when they push a table or whatever, they don't understand that this glass vase can fall and this glass cake, glaze, this glass vase falling is going to break and shatter glass everywhere. That is beyond the scope of like a five year old. Right. So with that being said, I don't think that turning towards violence for something like that is the right answer uh, when this child is is unbeknownst to its actions. And I would say that that would be crazy if your boss, your manager, whoever did that to you when you did actions like that. All right, two minutes on the clock. Go. Uh, well, you know, Omar made some some solid points there. Like I said, you have to pick your spots. Whenever a kid is like three, four, five, six, and you're coming up, when it's certain things like dropping something, breaking glass, I don't think you you should resort to violence. I think, uh, not violence per se, or whooping your child. I think that in those situations, obviously you could talk to them, show them the way, like that. But if it gets to an extreme situation where you've tried all these different methods, because not every child's the same. You have families where one child's like a valedictorian, ends up becoming some, not millionaire, but a very successful person. The other child ends up in prison. I've seen situations like that all the time. So every child is different. But whenever you get to certain extremes where you've tried all these methods of talking, all of that, I don't think there's a problem with then saying, you know what, let me whoop this child. Let me take it to that step. Because I've also seen so many scenarios held myself. I was a very troubled kid and whooping me put me into shape. It let me respect my father on a different level. It made me fear him respectfully. Not like I was scared of him, but I knew if I made a mistake, shit, that belt is coming out. You feel me? And some kids need that fear. They need that in order to whip them into shape. Of course, like Omar said, You have to pick your spots. You can't be whooping a kid just because he dropped something on the floor and he's five years old and he doesn't know any better. You know, like at that point, you're letting out your own trauma more than likely from your past. You can't go in with certain mentalities. So to me, me personally, in my experiences and seeing other people, I genuinely do believe that when you have to go to those lengths for certain kids, you need to go there. Because if you don't go there, there's a level of respect that kid will never have about you. And that's when you get into these scenarios where the kid is older and he doesn't respect anything you do or say. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, see, I think it's not about a respect thing. I think uh, uh, the whole respect for fear conversation is crazy. Uh, these parents wonder why later on in their lives their kids won't have relationships with them. They won't have you know communication with them. They, 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 they don't understand why they can't transition their relationship with their child uh, from, from, you know, the youth to the prepubescent teenager to the teenager to young adulthood into adulthood is because their, their relationship uh, uh, has this element of fear involved because of beating. There's too many studies out there about how uh, uh, abuse is the result of the physical punishment. Um, there's too many studies out there that talk about how parents can take things away. And we can always talk about, hey, I'm, I don't mean 
uh, that, I, you know, this person just goes crazy, ham, egg, and cheese, get the get the wires, get the baskets, get the, the pots and the pans, and starts beating their child. But the reality of the situation is, a lot of times out of 10, eight, seven, eight, nine times out of 10, those kids that are seeing physical violence, uh, uh, it, it escalates. And that, 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 that happens to be the case, too, when we talk about people in DV relationships. It always escalates. It's an escalating things. Those that stay in, like, continued, long-lasting DV relationships, it goes from the soft punches to harder punches to slaps in the face to full-on beatdowns. And I know that sounds like an escalation, but that's the reality of the situation. <clears throat> and then the sad part about this is, and there is a world in which those in domestic violence relationships can leave those relationships. Mm -hmm. There is a slim chance for a child to leave a parent when they're subjected to those things. So I don't think, honestly, you can build the healthy foundation or healthy relationship off the foundation of physical violence. All right. Freestyle round. Uh, pop it off. Pop it off. Hey, Omar, I do want to ask, do you are you talking about because it seems like you're kind of jumping on what types of whoopings here. So I just wanted to establish, are you talking all or are you talking specific ones? I mean, because any any type of physical violence, popping, spankings, slapping, uh, even slapping, beating. What about like a SWAT? Chest? Yeah, I think like that, those SWATs. Yeah, I think that that's unnecessary, too. I mean, so even in a situation where let's say it's like a just a immediate reaction. You're still against that. Like, like I've seen situations where a kid will say something wild, right? Not even just kids. Sometimes even a teenager and so on and so forth. And the mom just gives them a slap as like an immediate reaction. You think that's wrong? Yeah. Investigate why your immediate reaction to somebody saying things, the mm -hmm. verbal word, is a, is a hit. Because in any other situation, we couldn't justify <laughs> that, right? If somebody were to say... Uh, uh, I don't know what kids be saying wild or what just anything just anything if if you and I are sitting next to each other on a train and I say something wild and your immediate reaction is to hit me why is that the case and oh yeah but look at what you said though you said you and I right like even not even just you and I but obviously not forgetting the semantics of it but any other people that don't know each other to the degree of like a mother and a, a son or daughter or whatever when you are a parent you're job is to instill structure discipline and respect in your child not only for you but for the future right if i talk to my mom or my dad right let me not use my mom but if i talk to my dad in a certain way and my dad smacks me right i now know you know what in the future not just with my dad but with anybody else if i talk reckless like that those are the consequences that can happen and to compare it to other scenarios where you don't have that relationship with them they're not in, char in charge of instilling that respect. They're not in charge of instilling that discipline. So when you're a parent, it's your job to instill that. Because if you don't, the world will have to do that for you. You get what I'm saying? But even, even with what you're saying, though, you're still okaying and green lighting to your child. Okay, the reason why you got hit is because you're talking to somebody that you should respect or anybody really you should the mm -hmm. person that you should respect in a way that they don't deem as respectful so then they're taking that and saying hey i'm a person that you should respect and i can use physical violence towards you and that's not right we can go to relationships people that got beat and i know it's like loose correlations and stuff like that it's really hard to track their data but people who got beat as a child tend to be physically abusive like it's just true that's the way that they see it if you see violence as an okay measure of communication you will continue to enact violence throughout your life. That's just the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. and, and I could definitely understand where you're coming from. There. And statistically speaking, uh, there's definitely truth to that. But there are plenty of people who have been... Okay, yeah, I mean, this is up. Go ahead and vote, my brothers and sisters. I'm going to put the poll up again. Uh, we'll leave it open for still two minutes. Um, I'm going to leave it up in, for two minutes. Uh, <coughs> you can. Oh, I didn't mean to put the question mark there. I don't know why I put the question mark there. All right, you can go ahead. You can go ahead. I do want to know though, Omar. Now, like, so in the future, when it comes to like extreme scenarios, I assume you want to have kids, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to extreme scenarios, what are your methods like to to handle them? And when I say extreme, I'm not talking like this kid is on the verge of going to prison or some shit. I'm talking like 
they just do some wild disrespectful things that usually people handle it with like a whooping so what would you do in in my experience it's never been the the whooping that made me not do the thing it's always been the communication and i hear people say that all the time when they got beat it's a shared experience hey you know i disrespected my mom or whatever so she hit me but then behind the hit she reinforced that with the words now i would then i would ask well did you need to be hit in order to understand that lesson or did you need the words and as an adult now mind you we could talk about how fully fully developed the brain is but it's always to me seemed like you know what i can get this message with the words alone not necessarily the but physical the thing aspect. is though if you could get it with the words alone Ladies you would have even had to whoop them in the first place i think in those there are certain kids words don't work all the time and i'm talking for certain messages obviously when we're talking about like not breaking something right like you can enforce that with words but when we're talking about how you conduct yourself how you act you know especially when it comes to things like school you know what I'm saying? Like if you get in trouble at school for certain well, things, you, like do if you you're think, fighting. Do you think that everybody um, receives communication differently? So like the way that I talk to you and the way that you receive the message that I am saying to you is different than B Souls, Damo, Sage, you know, the neighbor, the 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 you know, I don't know, the person at the laundromat. Do you believe Yeah, everybody's that? different. Yeah. So so do you believe then that or well, with that train of thought, do you not think that, hey, how the parent is communicating this could be wrong. Like they should probably investigate instead of, of course. Going and, and, to the and just because I believe that you can whoop your kids does. If you see that it's not effective, you have to find another way. You get what I'm saying? Because not every kid is going to be reciprocated. Sometimes you can whoop a kid just once and that's all you have to do. Sometimes you can whoop a kid. You got to whoop a kid. If you got to keep whooping that same kid for the same problems, over and over and over and over, at some point, you got to find another method. Whether it's religion, therapy, counseling, whatever it is, you got to find another method to instill structure. But I don't disagree with the idea of taking it to that length because sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Some of these kids, <laughs> some of these kids are just bad, man. I'm sorry. Some of these kids are just bad, not by nature, but just through experiences but they've had through, and so on but so that's, forth. that's the problem it's, it's always through circumstance now we i mean again i think there are kids who were born with like chemical imbalances or just born yeah in mental certain, illnesses and stuff and yeah. so but and, and i think those are definitely the kids you shouldn't be like that, that's kids that definitely need to go seek like are you, you talking about help. like when you say mental illness you're talking about like an obvious one or one you then later find out type thing uh probably both probably both so like I, I can talk about like people that you know might have been at the front of the school in those classes, the special ed classes, mm -hmm. all the way to hey they have ADD, ADHD, and then keep going down the line to bipolar, schizophrenia, and stuff like that. So, but when you get to the ones that aren't obvious, though, isn't that more of like a when you find because you won't know. Obviously, like nowadays, you can kind of tell more because we just have more information about those things as compared to like even like in two thousands, right? But like, if it's a situation where you didn't know this kid was like a bipolar, like had bipolar disorder or something, I don't think there's anything wrong with that parent doing certain things up until that point. You get what I'm saying? I would I would say that they were wrong, uh, again for even going to that length. But I would still say that, uh, especially going forward, do a better <clears throat> job of investigating why. So know what the signs are. Because they, they have things out. And I'm not saying that they're always true. Because Dr. Umar will, will, will say, like, you know, just because the, the, the school tries to say this, just because these books try to say this doesn't mean your child is autistic. No, these, these aren't mm -hmm. always signs, 100%. But with that being said, you should probably look a little bit more carefully into your child when they start to display these patterns of behavior, right? So if, you're, if your child is staring at the walls... Uh, they're very loud in certain situations in public, but very quiet in other certain situations. You know, that that may be signs of autism. But that doesn't mean that when, you know, the grandma comes in and your child doesn't speak, that you should yell at them and beat on them because they're not respecting the authority. And that's the re that those are the real whoopings like those. That's that's the reality of like what it means to get whooped, especially in black households. Oh, you disrespecting your grandma because you didn't want to hug her. Oh, you disrespecting your grandma because you didn't want to talk to her. Come over here. I'm going to show you. That's the reality. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, of course, like, like.
like I said, there are levels to what you need to whoop or situations you got to whoop and situations you don't. You know what I'm saying? And it comes down to the parent on if that line. You get what I'm saying? But sometimes some people do go too far. And I completely agree with that because I've seen it. You know what I'm saying? I've seen parents go too far, even like in public. You know what I'm saying? Like, like when you when you got to go go that far, something's wrong, not just with the kid, but with you. You feel me? But like you got to like I said, you got to pick spots. And sometimes it only takes like one whooping for some kids. It could only take like two or three. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, every situation is different. Every kid is different, like you said. And when it comes to like the mental aspect, I feel like it's easier said than done because of course, nowadays we have these um, avenues of figuring these things out. But sometimes as a parent, you know, like you said earlier, a lot of parents, it's pride. You know, you don't want to admit your child has some mental illness because it makes you feel like, damn, like, you know, you know, not not like this kid's a bad kid or I something. You get what I'm saying? Or, yeah, something, something wrong happened. I just, I, I think that also in that conversation, um, What's it called? I, I don't think that people really realize how much communicating that violence is okay. Like, it, it becomes a very slippery slope. Because maybe at some point in your life, you can full-fledged stop and interpret that this is where you draw the lines. <laughs> but for your kid, the next generation, the next generation to come, it kind of it becomes more slipperier, right? It just becomes... Mm-hmm. But don't, can't you enforce whenever... Because even like like self-defense, right? Like you can use violence as self-defense. Violence can be, um, and this is going to sound crazy to people to take it out of context, but violence can be acceptable in the right scenarios. So like, of course, domestic violence, that's a bridge too far, right? But the same way we can identify violence and self-defense being okay, you can also identify like uh, whooping your kids, that kind of violence whenever obviously the situation requires it as okay you know like and it's up to you as a parent to also identify those levels of violence being okay or not but it would like be, if, it if would you, be it's, it's again how you interpret it because even now if you ask 60 people they can't even interpret self-defense they can't even mm-hmm. interpret self-defense we and and, it, and then it's, isn't that on those people though yeah but it's about who taught them so that's what i mean about communicating the idea that violence is mm-hmm. okay uh, in, in, a, in a perfect world, again, they would be defending <laughs> themselves because somebody's being violent and you would want that other person to know that, hey, violence isn't an okay way to communicate. So nobody would be committing acts of violence on them. But what they don't understand is that, you know, hey, because somebody stole your goods, in some states it works like this. I don't think we live in those states. We live in Georgia and Texas, so you can be violent all you want. <laughs> but in some states, you can't be violent. And we, we talked about this, me and my brother, when it came to Jonathan Majors. You can't be violent. Uh when somebody is taking your property it's illegal i think in new york it's like that because that's the jonathan Ma- i heard that the jonathan major shit like he, he same thing well I could, we couldn't find it so i'm gonna I, I agree with that when we looked it up but he claims that a lawyer said that you could be but i know in georgia you can be violent if somebody's taking your stuff in texas you can be violent if somebody's taking your stuff but states oh, like, it's like that. i actually haven't looked into texas I, yeah i'm uh, pretty law. sure it is you know georgia florida texas we can do whatever yeah. we want buddy I, you know I, <laughs> fuck it but but in a state like us, uh, 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 New York, you can't be violent when if somebody stole your property unless there's a threat to damage your property. But so like again, I just at the end of the day, I don't think violence is the answer. And then I saw somebody say, "Do step parents count?" Let me tell y'all something right now. That's a slippery slope right there. That that's lie. not that ain't slippery. I'll put the hard stop on it. Step parents should never. Put their hands on kids. If you look at the statistics behind children uh, in the household that end up being physically abused and essayed, it is done disproportionately by the step parent. It is done disproportionately when you introduce a step parent <coughs> into a household. Step parent. I, I honestly, I know this is gonna sound crazy. I don't even believe in step parenting. Oh, I, I'm being a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I'm this nigga wilding, bro. No, I, I, hey, what, if like you're saying, like, you don't believe in being a step parent? I don't believe in me being a step parent. I don't believe in somebody oh step parent. Kevin my Samuels kids. on right now, nigga. That's what he's doing. I, 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 I it, look, look, y'all gotta, 
everybody in the chat, on your own time. Uh, I, I be I be saying this. My my girl does some stuff uh, for the the court cases and or court system in Georgia. Look at them stats. It's crazy how they live normal lives. Step parent gets introduced. Essay <laughs> allegation. Essay allegation. Essay allegation. A uh, uh, physical abuse. Physical abuse. Physical abuse. Uh, emotional abuse, emotional abuse, starvation in the household, starvation in the household. Um, uh, uh, parents that have kids in a previous relationship get into another relationship and have other kids. They leave behind the other parent, uh, the other kids, specifically mm. men. It's nasty. It's what about nasty. aunts then? Do you feel this way? Like, is it more so because they're not the parent or biologically tied to the kid? Or do you more so feel because like, like, what is it? Because because aunts and uncles also whip kids as well. I don't know. It depends on what you read as to the theories. I mean, everybody can come up with their own theory. I, I can I can agree with what you're saying. It's because they don't have that close of a tie to the kid. I've I've been listening to uh, lately. Um, it's called it's not called hashtag didn't go to sleepovers, but essentially you can look up on TikTok, YouTube, Google, uh, kids who weren't allowed to go to sleepovers as kids, and it's mm. this movement. Not movement, but it's just these group of people sharing their experience. And their claims are, if you ask people when they were exposed to pornography, when they were exposed to sexual uh, uh, situations, guns, drugs, a good percentage of them were were exposed to them uh, at somebody else's house. Specifically, another family, uh, another uh, relative of their, you know, their aunts or, you know, whatever the case may be. So they they have their cousins and their cousins older, uh, uh, some the same age, exposing them to uh, sexual situations, and that can go as far as SA. That goes as far as SA too. What, what about a situation where the step parent has been like? I just seen an interview. I don't know for sure if it's like this for him, so don't quote quote me completely. But I seen Kirk Franklin. He was talking to, to uh, Shannon Sharp. I think it was Shannon Sharp show, mm-hmm. uh, and he was like his stepdaughter. He considered that like his daughter. I think he adopted her. Right. And I think he's raised her like her whole life damn near in a situation like that, where you were basically there for, from like birth, but you're the step parent. You still feel that way. Outliers can exist. I just, wouldn't, oh. <laughs> I would never, I would never, I wouldn't even do it, dog. I just, pro- I promise you, I wouldn't even. Yeah. Step parent stuff. I, I can't really, I don't really, I personally, I would never be a step parent either. Unless it's like a situation where, that kid is like fully grown or something. I don't know. Like it would take a lot for me to get in that. I yeah. I'm just not for it. But chat, that's your homework. Look up uh, uh, step parents involved with you know different types of violences in the household, and then look up kids who weren't allowed to go to sleep. Were you allowed to go to sleepovers as a kid? Not really, to be honest. I mean, I went to like people that like I knew, like family friends. But like, as far as people from school, if they was doing sleepovers, that wasn't something I really just went to. I was My parents never, weren't really with that. Yeah, I was never allowed to go to anybody's house that wasn't family. And then I will say, uh, <clears throat> at family's house is where I was exposed to those types of things for real, for real. Family friends? No, not family friends. Family. Like, my aunts, my cousins, my oh. uncles. And not saying they were the ones that exposed me. My older cousins, like... Hey, you know, mm-hmm. uh, my dad's got these magazines or whatever the case may be. And my uncle's a grown ass man. You know, it is what it is. He can. He can it's have actually crazy. Magazines. I would say, like, as far as like finding certain things out, I won't even lie. And you know, I'm a hard, I'm a religious person. But church also is another vessel where you could find certain shit out that like you wouldn't even think about at certain ages. You know what I'm saying? So it's sad, but it's just the environment we in nowadays, and it's only getting worse, really. Dang, it is what it is. Um, the last winner of that poll, these are slim, slim, slim margins. 16 to 14. Uh, I actually beat you in that last poll. Oh wow. Yeah, 16 to 14. That's crazy. These are close debates. One, two <laughs> votes are deciding these debates. So hey, if you're if, remember, vote based off of the argument that's made, not based off your opinion. Everybody should be voting. It's about a hundred people in here. Uh, make sure you continue to vote. Uh, again, the whole clause is in play. I'm giving it some breathing time. If you want to sub up because you think Mustard won that debate, go ahead, sub. Put it in that text chat. 
muster one. Fuck so that. those if they sub, I win automatically. Mm-hmm. Mm. Hey, I need somebody to sub then. <laughs> come on, man. What the hell? Yeah, niggas need to come through. Nah, 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 nah. They listen to real debates right now. Um, I'm gonna introduce the next topic. Uh, how do you feel about sexy red being bad for hip hop slash society? <sighs> society is a little bit kind of wild, but uh, <laughs> but hip hop. I want to say yes, but it's not really her fault. You know, do I have to argue that it's her fault right, or just I, if you believe it? I want you. I want you to uh, debate it if you believe it. Uh, it's crazy because I know you can get on this. This uh, I'm gonna say. Shit. Nah, I can't say that. I can't do her like that, man. I'm sorry. Okay. I actually like Sexy Red, man. I can't lie to you, bro. I like okay. Sexy Red, man. Okay. I can't do that to her. I'm glad I ain't on the know. Omar level where, you know, I'm a fan like that. Because Omar, Omar a hot girl. You know what I'm saying? He a hot girl. He right. He with that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I think I got the fan base. That's, no, that's not Sexy Red. That's fan not base. Sexy Red's right? fan base. <laughs> Whatever her fan base is, Omar with it. You know? Okay. okay. She, she caught, did she ever uh, go on y'all's pod or anything? Because no, I, I know she, she became, quoted y'all, right? Yeah, but she became extremely famous like right after. <laughs> her, she just fucking took off. She was insane. What did she do? She quoted y'all's tweet or your video or something, right? Yeah, she quoted our video. But at the time, she was interacting with a lot of tweets. So it was like, ah, uh, uh, okay. It is what it is. Damn. So you was just a fan for real. Yeah, I fuck with the, the music was hard. The music, <laughs> music was hard. I ain't gonna lie. I still fuck with her. All right. Uh, the next one, and I know this is one we'll disagree with. Getting tricked by women is not an excuse. Mm. Getting tricked okay, by yeah. women is not an excuse. And, and this one, uh, we might have to add a little bit more time because this encompasses uh, uh, trans women. This encompasses uh, oh. underage Damn. women. Okay. This encompasses uh, 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 women with any STDs or anything like that. Getting tricked by women, tricked is not an excuse. Um, I won the last round. so Wait, when you say STDs, can we like, even if I don't agree with like each and every part, like, because STDs, I ain't gonna lie, I don't really see how you can get tricked. I'm not gonna lie. You don't don't, don't have to argue STDs if you don't believe that, but if you believe that... okay. You know, trans women fall in this the category. If you believe that, yeah, anything else falls into this category, then um, you know, it is what it is. You can argue that. I feel you. All right, uh, we're gonna have yeah, we might have to add some time for this one. This was yeah. I'm gonna do three minute rounds for this one. <coughs> um, mm. pause. That's crazy. Three minute rounds. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go first. Uh, my timer starts now. Uh, so as a man, I think you have. Uh, power. I think you have responsibility. I think that you have things going for you that um, women don't have access to. With that, with that great power comes great responsibility, and it is re- it is the the responsibility of a man to take control over his own destiny through adversity, through all these things. So, with that being said, I believe that getting tricked by women is not an excuse. Full stop. Period. Point blank. It is up to you to control your Johnson, your Willie, your money, your 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 time, your space, and only let those who fit the 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 standards that you set forward, which should be high standards if you are a, a higher man, uh uh you should only let women who fit those high standards in your life. Getting tricked by young girls uh, uh, in clubs or whatever the case may be to have sex with them. Control your penis. Stop stop letting these... Uh, again, I'm not saying you're the only one that is at fault if anything like that happens. The club should hold some responsibility. But at the end of the day, you unzipped your pants. You, you, you let your dick lead your life and your destiny and you inserted it into that, that young person. Uh, same thing with a trans person. I understand how casual dating works, how casual sex work. It's all so surface level. It's honestly bullshit. It is all surface <laughs> level bullshit. People do not take it seriously, and that's how they end up in these situations. 
in which they are then later claiming they got tricked. You did not get tricked. I would honestly say in 98% of other situations, nobody could use that as an excuse. If you spent all your money and you sent it to the Prince of Zamunda in Africa because you got an email, I'm not listening to a grown man say, hey, I got tricked. If you bought a lemon for a car, I'm not listening to a grown man say that he got tricked. If you signed up for a bad job or a contract for your cell phone that's bad or a gym membership that's bad and restrictive, I am not allowing a grown man to say that he got tricked. You control your own destiny. You have the ability uh, the ability to critically think, and you have the ability to do your due diligence. You need to read more. You need to investigate more. And then you need to figure out ways, especially as a young man, to do a better job at investigating. If you continuously are in situations and circumstances where you are getting tricked, then I can no longer consider you to be a man. Uh, I, can see my, <laughs> I can see my 10 seconds. Yeah, it just is what it is. All right, I'm gonna... not considered to be a man is crazy, dog. That's why. Hey, it is what it is. All right, timer starts now. Go. All right. Uh, so Omar made some pretty good points, and I think <clears throat> off rip, we should just address the fact that when you say a man <clears throat> can't quote unquote be tricked, whether you're intending it or not, because I know Omar's not intending it, you're almost giving the other person in that scenario um, an excuse. You're you're letting them off the hook. For blame almost to a certain degree and there's blame on all sides whenever things go south in any type of sexual relation um outside of like obviously extremes and stuff but when we're talking about having sex with somebody there's blame and accountability on both sides that's off rip <clears throat> secondly um when it comes to these scenarios the blame more so i put is on the culture the culture of society now has created something to where one night stands and situations like one offs and all that stuff, it creates these interactions where you know so little about that person, and now you're trying to have sex, and sex is a serious thing. You know, it could change your life forever, especially when you're talking about STDs, right? And that's why I said STDs, I can't really defend that because that should be something like if you're fucking raw, I'm sorry, man, like that's on you. Um, but as far as, you know, people being trans or underage, that's all a part of culture. That's not a part of the man, per se, or even like the woman, even. That's a part of the culture, because when you have an underage girl, sometimes in situations like a club or a party, like I'm in college, I see it all the time where high schoolers come into parties. And th you know, that's one of the reasons I just don't go to parties. But that's uh, you have these high schoolers come into parties 17 16 year old high schoolers and i just seen on twitter the other day a 17 year old shorty i didn't even know she was 17 i couldn't have tell now now that i know i wouldn't do that but if she walked into a college party right now you can't tell me there's not a line of niggas trying to hit that and is there accountability on them of course but there should be accountability on her, her knowing her age and also the culture created to put them in that environment in the first place. You can't just say and uh, say there's no excuse when there's so many other variables that lead just to getting to that moment. Now, um, as far as trans go, I'll address that on the next argument because that's a whole <laughs> different uh, combo. How much time I got left? 21 seconds. Yeah. Go ahead, Omar. All right. You would have hit that girl, wouldn't you? Hit that? <laughs> Hell, nah! Don't do that oh, now. Nah. <laughs> oh, brother! Nah, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Come on! Oh man, not again! Oh brother! <laughs> oh, oh brother! Oh brother! All right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Three, two. So I can I can agree with you that culture is a big part of the issue. Now, I would ask who sets the tone in these cultures. Uh, if we're investigating like that young woman who um, is pretending to be X age or whatever, at least that's what the people are alleging. She's a t uh, pretending to be 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I would ask why she's doing these things. And the reason is because she's had access to different uh, 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 situations, spaces, circumstances, riches, or things that a normal 
young person would have not because men have allowed her to. And because she knows that she can have her way by being a little bit deceitful or not truthful, she continues to 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 navigate her life like that because um, she knows what it can afford her. She's a child. I'm pretty sure she thinks it's cool that she can get bags and tattoos and shoes and be have the entry to the club and cars and stuff like that. But we have to look back at who allowed her to even think those things. I don't necessarily think that. Oh, I do think that women might have been gassing her up. But again, who's who's that one instilling that culture? It's the men that actively have in the past looked for those types of women. Uh, it's some of the rhetoric that we preach. Um, and I'm not going to say we to lump us in that, but I'm talking about men in general. But going to, to the idea of absolving them, I'm not I'm not absolving them at all uh, uh, from any sort of thing. I'm not absolving them. But as a man, you still have what I believe greater responsibility because you have greater power in any and all situations. You have the greater power over whatever other situation is supposed to go on. We're talking about older men and younger women. We're talking about men with transgender women. We're talking about uh, uh, men in these accidental pregnancies, these accidental pregnancies or whatever the case may be. Um, so to believe that you're not doing your due diligence in this situation um, and that is some sort of excuse is absolutely lazy. And I think that that is a way, if anything, to get uh, uh, yourself absolved of responsibilities. Everybody is looking for a way out for whatever reason. And that would be fine uh, uh, <coughs> because those are people. But we also understand that men have a greater responsibility than other people. And therefore, they have to hold at least some sort of higher. It doesn't have to be, oh, this person has 1% and the men have 90% or 99%. But they have to hold some greater responsibility. And with that being said, I am tired of the rhetoric uh, behind getting tricked. Tricked is not an excuse to me. <coughs> All right. And go. All right. So uh, <clears throat> before I get into like the trans side of the tricking, um, I won't lie. Accidental pregnancy. I didn't even know that was a thing until you just said it. I can't even. Well. Accidental pregnancy, I guess the idea I knew, but like niggas saying that they accidentally got somebody pregnant at the end of the day, you fuck raw, you, you know the consequences. Um, but as far as um, what you said about the culture being created by men, <clears throat> men can't, men cannot create a culture if women don't abide to it. So it goes both ways. And I don't think you're saying that it's all on men for that, but. At the end of the day, you can't create something without having something there to abide by it. So the women have to abide by the culture to some degree. And women abide by that culture to a large degree, especially underage women. Um, now, as far as like the trans thing goes, I'm going to just be real. You know, me and Omar have talked about this before. I've talked about this with other people a lot. Um, one, like I said, to start things off. When it comes to this, a lot of this is just due to the culture of one night stands, and a lot of this can just be avoided by not doing it off rip. But to the people that do engage in one night stands, I'm not going to tell you how to run your life. You do what you want to do. But in these scenarios, I feel like if you are a trans person, that knowing the elevation of hate crimes and how they're targeted and knowing the risk you can put yourself in if things go south, because... Usually the retort I hear is, oh, but if they tell them that's a risk, right, because they could be attacked. There's a lot of hate crimes against them. Well, when you don't tell them and they find out through another means, you're putting yourself in a more, uh, 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 what do you call it, vulnerable state to be attacked. Maybe even worse than it would have been in the original uh, uh, scenario. And at the end of the day, if you're trans, you should want to sleep with anyone, not even just trans, but you should want to sleep with somebody that accepts you for you. Even if it's a one night stand, whatever it is, that's how you should act. And I feel like in a situation where you're trans, not telling that other person, you're taking away their right to want to sleep with a trans person or not. <clears throat> and whether one night stand or not, <clears throat> I'm not going to go as far as rape, but... 
that's a level of consent you're taking away from that person. I'm not going to say rape because at the end of the day, you like what you like. If you look at it, you like it. It is what it is. You feel me? Um, but that person should still have the choice to say, hey, this is a part of who you are and I'm not rocking with that as far as who I sleep with. We can be friends or whatever, but when it comes to sex and me putting my thing inside you, you feel me? That's like a whole different bridge. And a lot of these trans women, I'll be real right now. I think most trans women, you could tell. But when you get, get to these women that be looking like Ice Spice and shit, gotta switch it up. <laughs> they can say Ice Spice and shit. We're gonna do another. I had, that's the first story that came into my mind, dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're gonna do another uh, two minute round on this one because I think this one's gonna be good. Um, it's yeah, freestyle I, or just two minutes? No, just two minutes. Two minutes and then we'll, we might do a freestyle to end it. But um, I think this is a good conversation. So I wanna start with the uh the the men create the culture women need to abide by it um i think that that would reign true if we didn't investigate like the past and why maybe somebody would think that you know youth is perceived to be better or whatever the case may be um i don't think that women have been choosing to abide by it, but more so forced to be uh, uh, abide by it. If we got to remember, historically speaking, youth has always meant fertility. Youth has always meant uh, uh, strength. Youth has always meant power, whatever the case may be, energy, et cetera, et cetera. So those men, uh, whether it be younger or older, always sought after younger. Those were the ones that were to bear children. Those were the ones that were deemed the, the best looking. Those were the, the, those were the ones that uh, seemed to be chosen more often. And the older you got, and I'm talking about way back then, hell, over 15, um, you started to get skipped over more and more and more. Um, so when we talk about men setting the culture, women having to abide by it, uh, uh, women having to abide by it to uh, be a participant in the culture, honestly speaking, the, the choice was, hey, either you do things that make yourself be perceived to be pretty as a younger person or you're going to get left out there. And being left out there means not being married, not being taken care of because women didn't have rights back then uh, and being stuck at your parents' house until they die and then being the outcast of the community or, the, uh, or, or whatever township you're in. So I don't necessarily think it's a, a woman chose to abide by this for a long standing time. They had to or they or it just meant death, quote unquote, death. Um, the trans conversation is another conversation. I only got 13 seconds left. But the thing that I will say is that, um, again, I think that these people are attracted to these people. Uh, people should have sex with people that they're attracted to. Uh, we don't ask all the questions that we need to. Um, dang. I, yeah, no, I lost time on that one. Um, no shit. I had to run it back button too soon. Um, go ahead. I'll give you two minutes. Boom. As far as the historical aspects go, Omar is pretty, uh, consistent on that. He's pretty fair on that. There's a lot of historical aspect that goes into like the younger women being seen as like, you know, uh, more, of um, I don't remember what word you attractive. use, but I, I, attractive and all of that. I get that completely. Like a lot of people throw that out there. Not saying I agree with it, but that that is something that a lot of pe people think. Um, now, as far as like sexual interactions, I do think that applies, but I don't think that applies to everybody because even in these scenarios where <clears throat> you don't know, how would you how would you tell that? Like like I just brought up that shorty that was seventeen, you know, that uh, was on the TL. You wouldn't look at her and automatically assume, hey, this is probably a 17, 16 year old shorty. Let me get up in that. You know what I'm saying? This is a shorty that, like, she could walk on a college campus right now and niggas would not know she's in high school. You feel me? And there's a lot of girls like that. And I think we need to talk to those people, those uh, all, not even just those specifically, but any woman that's around 17, 16, and also enforce to them, hey, you're putting yourself also in a very compromising position. These are not only guys you don't know, people you don't know. These are older people. At different stages of life that you're not even accustomed to yet and i think when they put themselves in those environments we don't spend enough time talking to them about that and as far as like the men go like i said you can avoid it by not putting yourself in those situations but at a certain point in time you don't just walk up to every shorty and say yo show me your birth certificate show me your driver's license right now so i know for sure that you're 19 18 21 whatever it is right and like i said women lie 
people lie. It's okay to admit people can lie and be very good at it. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't justify certain things happening to them, but it's a reasonable explanation. Uh, I'm going to do the three minute. Um, what's the call? I'm gonna do freestyle the, shit. Yeah, three minute freestyle, and then we'll put the poll up for this. I, so I, what I do, I understand what you're saying. Women do lie. We do spend some time talking about it but we could do enough but i would always want to ask like we, we would have to investigate why younger people want to be in older spaces and i think that that's like an easy one to say because we were younger at, uh, at a certain time uh it was just different because mm -hmm. we were men but the, the the allure of being in older spaces was always there but what i'm saying to you is i mean at a certain point and it becomes especially as you get older uh, and get away from the the legal age limits it becomes very clear like yo this person is underage now there may be some exceptions well, what do y'all mean I, I don't understand what y'all mean by that like like of course like through convos you can kind of tell right but like when you're in these scenarios of one night stands right or like at a party whatever it's not like you just sit there and say hey like what's your major hey what's like, that, to, what, like to, to how me, is it paying these bills to me to you me know though, that's saying? to me though that's a part of like you meant you as a man not doing your your job to protect yourself now i think both of us aren't uh, uh champions of casual hookup culture like we're just not mm -hmm. i think both of us i are mean against that. The past yeah but not now <laughs> yeah i think i think we're both against that but it's because it comes with so many risks and at some point mm -hmm. you do have to protect yourself like i could have been a non-seatbelt <laughs> wearer before but at some point, I'm I'm gonna put that fucking seatbelt on because I just grew up. Like I understood, hey, I can't do these things that put me at a great disadvantage for bad things to happen to me. And that's just me taking accountability for my actions. Fuck what everybody else is doing, because at the end of the day, it's about self preservation. I have to be accountable for what. But don't you think I'm that's a more of. blatant thing? Because like, like even the examples you brought up, right? You brought up the seatbelt. I can't remember the, some of the other ones you brought up mm -hmm. earlier. Like you said, uh, getting scammed online. Yeah. Like or like buying a bad car, some of those things are more blatant. And I know your probably your retort is it's blatant also with the younger woman, but I don't think it's as blatant. You know what I'm saying? Like like Omar, be be real. You were just talking about this shorty. Do you think that shorty looked 17 in that photo? Like, would you have tell? Would you have known she was 17 off rip? Oh, I I saw this in that photo. I probably wouldn't have said she was 17. I probably wouldn't have said she was 17. Yeah. And that's how these shorties be dressing. And, and that, and to me, that's okay. I'm not talking about, and I said that in the space, I'm not talking about you seen a one-off photo. We know photos can be doctored, edited, all these different things manipulated. People can put makeup on. All I mean, we're stuff. assuming she looks like that. I mean, I don't know, but I'm, and, we're assuming she looks that, like that. But I'm real. saying this is just about a photo. These things can be done to a photo. I'm talking about in real life interactions with people. And that's the same thing mm -hmm. with like a car and stuff. Cause I think a car is a car can be deceptive. I've been through shitty cars. You might not yeah. know what's going on with that car, but it's up to you to crank that car up, cut the heat and the, the cool on, <laughs> press the gas down. But people don't do that, Mustard. They buy cars mm -hmm. sight unseen. And those are the same people that fall for the same bits of deception that other people do in this conversation. And I can't, I can't, I personally cannot. Uh, uh, say, oh well, you know, this is your excuse. Now, you know, especially when, it, especially when it's repeated. I repeated is like a whole nother conversation. Come on, car still? You talking about short? Both, shorties. both. I ain't gonna lie, both. Because <laughs> hey, again, all right, one off situation. You know that that woman on the TL confused you. You met her in real life. You had conversations with her. Somebody told you she was eight or seventeen. All right, cool. That happened to you. I don't even want to use the whole. What I'm going to say is going to sound wild to some people, but like, <clears throat> what about those scenarios where you have girls that have done it so much, right? Because let's be real, a lot of these high schools do it a lot. It's not like a one-off, right? But these girls have done it so much, they almost, know, they almost know how to conduct themselves in a way that people don't know. You get what I'm saying? I'm not even going to use the whole, she's mature for her age, because I don't even want to sound like one of those niggas but like you know what i'm saying like, like like a woman if you spend enough time in these environments you can know how to conduct yourself you know what i'm saying like like whether it's the getting a fake id in you know uh but dressing you, a certain you, way talking you, a certain way but you know way. what though and I, i'm about to put the poll up after i say this and then we can continue the conversation i think those people 
are naive, not outside. The people that get fooled by those people because they're naive. They're not outside. Um, they're also not a part of this culture. They're or, horny. They're horny or they 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 uh, uh, continuously overlook things that would make it fairly obvious that this person is not it. So I'll give you an example because I think the idea of deception uh, or acceptance, you know, runs the wide range. The idea that like that woman the other day who was on the Asian woman who was had the accent on the mac and cheese, oh, yeah, combo, yeah. the idea that she was <laughs> born in Atlanta and people were getting deceived that she's from Atlanta for real. And that's her accent are people who actively don't uh, uh, populate or congregate in areas with black people in the South. Right. That's the only mm-hmm. way you would ever get fooled by that. To say like, oh, my God, she sounds like a black woman. She sounds like she's from Atlanta is because you are not around those people. You refuse to look for the (coughs) obvious signs. You're horny and you want to be (laughs) deceived, in my opinion, because as somebody who is in Atlanta, who congregates with black people, who is a black person and who was outside with the community, it was clear as day off rip. That bitch ain't from no. (laughs) What are we? Is that even how y'all say cornbread for real? Nobody says cornbread like that. And mind you, that was the craziest cornbread. Like somebody <laughs> might say cornbread like that in the poll is up chat. Somebody might say cornbread like that, but it's the cornbread like you're from Georgia, the main like you're Terrence Howard. <laughs> <in the same laughs> flow. Uh, and then she said, ar, 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 like you're from Baltimore. Or iron, yeah. iron, or whatever. You the said fuck that, that was. shit like you was know. from Baltimore. So that's three different places in one video. But that she might be me. a military kid, bro. No, she's no, she's a girl from Thailand, dog. But so those are the same people who uh, again we talked about it earlier though. Like there are men out there that don't really they don't get no bitches. They don't talk to no women. They don't do none <laughs> of that stuff. So in the in the off chance that they do get to talk to women, and this runs the gamut too. That, that you could be a nerd, lame, no money. And still don't get no bitches, and you could be rich, famous, and successful, and don't get no bitches. I think that's why Zion. I ain't gonna lie, rich, famous, successful. You gotta get some level of bitches. I think that's bro. why Zion geeked out over Mariah Mills, though. Zion, because he don't get no. <laughs> Zion got another shorty. Okay, that's fine too. And they both, both of them do OF, and both of them squirt on cam. Look, look. Oh, his other girl's only fan shorty. Yes, too? yes, bro. He don't oh. get, he don't get no, he don't get no play. Zion, so the first bro. one that walked up on him, he got geeked out over, and he did that shit. Same thing with Anthony Edwards. So when you, I'm sure he was doing that in co- in college too at Duke. Geeked honest, out, though. geeked out over trash. It's just, yeah, but we've seen it. We've seen it. You get geeked yeah, yeah. out over trash, and that's when you. And I don't even want to say that these people are trash. I don't necessarily want to disrespect them because. Oh no, you can say it. Be honest. To, to be horse shame to the girls. Well, to the especially to the girls that like to see that is that's trash behavior. But the ones that geek out over trash, you're just horny to fuck. So you don't ask those questions. We know that. <laughs> where, where, where you from? What your name is? What's your son? <laughs> what you doing after this? We already ready to fuck. Damn. You didn't ask her no other questions. And that's real though. That that really happens. I think also there there are scenarios where you don't even get to like that point where you're asking. Maybe you'll ask a couple questions like like how you enjoying the party, blah, blah. People will just go straight to the bathroom type shit. You know what I'm saying? And and like I said, I think that's just more of the culture though. You know what I'm saying? Cause cause that goes both ways. Like the same women, those are women giving it up. It's not like we're talking about uh essay or you know, those kind of stuff. But we're talking about a situation where they're both consenting to it. That's a part of the culture. It's also on the women, too. Now, obviously, we're having a convo as men. So let me even put that to the side. You know, I don't like to. I hate when niggas do that. Point is, though, it's that's a part of the culture. You know, like, it's just not something people do. You feel me? Like, like, like Omar, be real. When If you, because you, you're not even, you, you're not part of that kind of culture. But you've seen that culture. Mm-hmm. You know that, like. How would you even like verify the age without doing the whole convo thing? Because like, like I said, if a woman is not a woman, if a young like 17, 16 year old girl has been, been in enough environments, can she fake it? I I personally don't believe so. If you're if you're being lazy, of course she can fake it, but it'll be a bad fake. To me, it'll be the calm bread. <laughs> it'll be the calm break. It'll, it'll. I don't know. Maybe I'd have to see it because, like, I've, I've just never been in those scenarios, honestly. Um, and maybe I, I, I have, and I just d- d- found a way out of that or something. And, I don't know. And to me, the, and I'll say this, and it's also because, and I'm glad you, I'm glad you said that. I've been in those scenarios, 
where, and that's why I don't exist in those scenarios anymore, where a woman has walked up or a young girl has walked up and trying to talk and gets brushed off. And there's one person that I'm with that, damn, she bad as hell. (laughs) And me and a couple other niggas are like, she was clearly 16. What are are you talking about right now? (laughs) What are you? T- what are you really, really getting into? Well, was it off of looks or off how the- she acted? Both, <laughs> both. Okay, well, and, yeah. And, if, it, it, if it's obvious, then and, I ain't and, there, and but there's also been other times like, and I know like everything isn't a thousand percent like true, but like a tattoo is a decent indicator. All right, you had to be eighteen to get a tattoo, but sometimes you get a tattoo. And, okay, cool. She has bad. Acting. I've seen high schoolers get tattoos though. That's what I'm saying. I've seen high schoolers get tattoos, so uh, it's okay. Uh, uh, she has bad acne. Not saying that people with bad skin are automatically youthful, but that's usually a sign of, of puberty. That's it right there. Mm-hmm. Um, braces is a sign to... Braces is like a almost... Yeah. Braces is a sign. There's other things that are like a, a too young of a face. Like they, These are signs. Um, but I've had it where it's been both situations. They came up and they said, oh man, you know, we had a conversation real quick and it was clear whether it was through their look or whether through what the fuck they were saying Oh, you, this is a child. But there's always one nigga that's, man, she bad as fuck, man. I ain't gonna lie. I'm finna, I'm finna turn up on, I'm finna fuck on her. Usually be those sad niggas, though. It, that's just how it is. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's usually the sad niggas that fall for shit like that. I can't even lie. And honestly, bro, that's why I say, and you, you're right about, like, do you think most of the guys that fall for this are just guys that, like, they just don't interact with women like that? Or is it just niggas that just don't get pussy? Well, I guess it's the same same lane. I think it, it's a it's a combination of dudes that don't. And there's some grown I, Jay. And let me let me clarify for for people in the chat. There are some people out there that fit what we just said. There are grown women with braces. My girlfriend just had braces. There are grown women with acne. There are grown people with all these things. But the, the odds are not. The odds aren't no. very high. And then also, if you have question about it. Put it back in. Put put your put your meat back in your pants. If you gotta say to yourself, "Oh man, she, ah, I can't for sure say she has all of these signs," but I'm making excuses. Well, grown people have braces. Well, grown people have acne. Well, you know, um, I don't even think you gotta go that far because even like when I was in like uh, because I used to go to, I mean, I'm still in college, but even in the college parties I used to go to, right? Like, I stopped going to parties like about like a year or two ago when I was like. Cause I'm like a I, I'm like a junior. I'm uh, not red shirt, but you know what I mean. Mm. When you go to these parties and you're like 21, 20, 22, like if somebody to me, this is just how I act. If I see a shorty that's just acted immature at a party, that's already a turnoff to me. So whether she's young, like literally young, like 16, 17, or maybe she's 21, 22, it's already a turnoff to me. And I think the real issue is we got to teach these niggas, raise your standards. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same thing even with, no disrespect to trans women, but even with some of these trans women, niggas will say they got tricked. And look, I I stand by it. It happens. But when I see the women, I'm like, nigga, like, look at her. No disrespect. Like I said, mind you, these are pre-op women, pre-op women. These are pre-op women. Pre-op. Niggas. I got tricked by pre-op. Yeah, that's that's why they still have a penis. I thought they, they change sex. it though. Uh, no, I'm saying the niggas that that get tricked by pre-op women, the women with the penises, and they still okay, that's that ridiculous. Stuff. But they that's do. Ridiculous. But th- these are the people we talking about. But even even post-op, it's still the same. The the same the same thing still fits. But what about the ones that look like? You know what I'm saying? But to me, if you've been if you've been X years post-op, you've been on estrogen for X years. Hey, you you just had sex with a woman, dog. And that's okay. Ah, nah, nah, I can't, it, bro. But it wouldn't have changed. Your experience wouldn't have changed unless somebody told you, oh, that, that was a man. But I'm not going to lie you. But you feel it, Omar. But, you know, maybe not you, but me, I'd feel it. I'd feel... <laughs> I'm not going to say how I'd feel because I don't want your stream to get taken down. Oh, my But, God. like, I would feel it. You feel me? I'd feel like... <laughs> I'm just going to leave it there. Bro. If you... but like, But, again... You know, I don't know about your last casual, the relationship before this one, all this stuff like that. What you felt is how you felt. If somebody told you one day that that person was 
in a previous life, not in a previous life, but before a man, you still were attracted to that. And that should be okay. I know it's a societal thing. It's a mental roadblock, et cetera, et cetera. But that, that's the reality of it. You were Oh, but what about, though, doesn't that also apply to, like, and I'm not saying it's the same before niggas kill me. It's not the exact same. But doesn't it also apply to, like, situations where somebody didn't feel like they were, like, essayed or something in the moment? But then when they, like, revisit it and someone tells them, uh, not saying it's the same. Hold on, hold on. Just listen, listen to what I'm about to say. <laughs> but then when they revisit it, they're like, oh, I didn't feel like that. But... <laughs> bro, stop, uh, bro. That's not what I'm go ahead, saying, go ahead, bro. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Just, I may have just lost the debate right there, but what I'm saying is like, I'm, in, so. <laughs> I'm saying if you have a situation where someone tells you, "Hey, that was that was essay, that was," uh, I don't know to say the word because I don't want you to get banned. I know, like our word, right? And then like now you're like revisiting. You're like, oh, but I liked it at the time, but like it falls under that category. You feel me? Isn't that kind of the same thing? How is that not the same thing? <laughs> you lost it. You lost it. You lost it. You lost it. No, it's okay, bro. Just forget I said that, bro. Forget I said that. I, I, I got to think about that again, and I'm, I'm going to explain it again. When yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I think that, again, ultimately, like, there's a level of due diligence that I just know that. And you can, we can talk about the culture. There's a level of due diligence that people aren't doing as a whole, <laughs> niggas that repo. No, no, no. no. <laughs> There's a level of due diligence that people aren't doing um, when it comes to just a lot of things. Mm-hmm, hey, yeah. I got I got scammed uh, uh, at this job. I got scammed at this. Um, you know. Oh yeah, you can't sub for a repo now. We do sub. Hey, no, 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 no. If you want a repo, we will sub. We will sub every. Nah, every no, y'all don't got us. Y'all don't got us. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sub for repo. But I got, I got scammed at this job. I got scammed at college. I got scammed in life. And as I grow older, I, I, I can admit that there are situations in which somebody gets scammed. But to me, scam means that you're a naive person. And I could see like how a young person would get scammed. I got scammed as a youth. I really did in different <laughs> occasions. I got scammed. I just didn't know any better. I was like financially. Yeah, financially, I got scammed as a youth. I I, I, t- I sent a guy some shoes, and he was supposed to send me back some money after he got the shoes. So I sent the shoes first. He never sent the money. I put a PayPal claim out. Uh, uh, <laughs> PayPal blocked his account, but I didn't realize all they needed was a tracking number to unblock mm. his account. So he sent me back, I think he sent me back a couple of rocks or something like that in a box. But he had a tracking number, so PayPal just went ahead and unfroze his account. Something like that almost that's something like that happened to me where you know those fake PayPal emails mm-hmm. that you can get? Same shit. But I was like young. I didn't even know nigga fa- nigga scam me. And that's, but and nowadays that's, that shit, that shit not gonna that work. That shit not gonna work. And and then also on the on the end of that, like my granddad before he got scammed for some um he got scammed for some windows, like the insulated windows that came and they were selling some windows to him or whatever the case may be. So I can get how naive, ignorant people can get scammed. But as a man in a certain age range, like that, that should no longer be an excuse. You're not naive. You're not ignorant to some of these situations. You have the ability. And, and the reality of the situation is. People just aren't doing their due diligence when it comes to school. Hey, I didn't make it. I didn't make the best out of school. School was a scam. Da 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 da. da. You just went to the wreck. You went home. You smoked weed. <laughs> you came back to school. When it comes to or you were school, undeclared the whole time. Yeah, you were undeclared the whole time. Got to graduation. Now you figure you want to try to do something your senior year. Um, you 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 got scammed uh, on this job. That job was a scam. Well, they hired you day one at the interview, right? Said that they, you know, gave you all the red flags right there. They didn't even background check you and they hired you. So you knew it was a scam because they were so short staffed. They hired you day of. That shit is not a scam. You just didn't do your due diligence. You bought a car sight unseen. You never asked them to crank it up. Uh, uh, you, you, you paid for the man that was selling belts at the gas station that, hey, I just went to the mall and stole these belts. I'm selling them for $60 and it's a Louis Vuitton belt. You're not getting <laughs> scammed. <laughs> You're just not doing your due diligence. So I, I just, maybe that's just where I am as at the age that I am. It would be very hard to scam me, but that's because I'm not believing 
everything out there to be this reality. There's no there's no YouTube course. If somebody tried to sell a YouTube course right now to you, I could turn your channel from uh, uh, how many subs it's at to a hundred thousand. I'm about those months. like uh, when you say courses. I'd be thinking like Fresh and Fit and Andrew Tate. No, no, no. I'm talking about like to turn your YouTube channel into a hundred thousand sub channel. In yeah, three I months. don't. I wouldn't even no. Because you know you you do your you know that that's not real and you if you were to do that you would do your due diligence look at their background but these niggas ain't doing that um, the results of the poll are in <laughs> guys we gotta get some more votes on these polls a whopping nine to seven sound like I won <laughs> I lost the winner is mustard I knew it. Wow. Uh, I'm not going to lie, chat. That was also the last debate. I lost my first debate series. Damn, Omar. This is not looking good, bro. <clears throat> looking like the Falcons out here. Taking L's and shit, bro. I, I, know, I know that people vote based off of if they agree or they don't agree with the premises. <laughs> <laughs> I already know. I, I chose these ones on purpose. A lot of these young men think Tory Lane should be free. They don't know why. Uh, I don't know why you picked the Jonathan Majors one that specific. You, you could have got anyone. I, I already. You think I don't know how business works, my nigga? Come on, man. Like, duh, the nigga's gonna get replaced. Duh. That was that was. Like, my I knew he was cooked. Quick. I knew he was cooked, man. Come on. I was I was trying to get that one quick. Um, yeah, and then I knew. Well, I knew about the never should have whipped the child. I think actually I argued. Yeah, that, that one. You already know. Yeah. I'm a, I'm on that. But getting tricked, I. I ain't gonna lie, we put out that Josh Giddy video on actually on every channel, on my channel, on Let's Keep It a Bug, the clip, all that stuff. You should read the comments. Apparently, <laughs> uh, apparently there are like fifty thousand men out there just getting tricked on a daily basis. Okay, Giddy, I'm gonna say this about Giddy. If you look at that girl, I'm sure you've seen the girl. Mm -hmm. That girl looks young. She looks what is she 15, 16? You know, I will say this. I want to ask you this also. How do you feel about somebody like Giddy, right, who came from, I think he's Australian, and I think the age of consent there is different than it is here. I'm not saying it's, ju I'm not justifying, but how do you feel about those kind of scenarios? I don't think that that's true if I looked it up right, or maybe I'm yeah, thinking. I don't know. I, I thought that people were, I thought, I could have swore people said Australia has a different age of consent. Oh, it is 16. Okay, the legal consensual age yeah. is 16. But even then, I mean, to to be quite honest with you, um, shout out to Typhoon for resubbing. Uh, to be honest with you, that's it's it's not an excuse. You move to a different place, you learn the laws and the customs. Mm -hmm. um, but even then, I think that that speaks to the culture that we were setting that we set. Because if we're saying <laughs> that, okay, he got tricked and or he was kind of willing because he knew or what he's accustomed to is youth. That goes back to what I was saying about how men set youth as a standard for women mm -hmm. uh, as far as what makes them more desirable. Um, and the law and stuff? No, not just the law. Like, if he, if he, let's say he was like, oh, you know, back in Australia, I didn't know. So I saw her. I was attracted to her. Uh, but, you know. 16. I mean, I'm not saying that's how he thought. No, I was no, just I, saying. I but I'm just saying, I'm just yeah. saying in general. That means he saw somebody that had an extreme, extremely youthful look. And desired her, right? Because we agree. I agree. She looks like she's 15, 16. Yeah. But so yeah. that means he looked at somebody who looked 15, 16 and saw somebody that was extremely desirable and attractive enough to partake on the act. And that's the culture. That Not even partake. They were in a relationship. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, no, they say it's one night. I don't know. I just got. I, I don't promise you. I, prom I just got done arguing with somebody today in the messages of the last podcast. There are a lot of people that are really defending Josh Giddy. Wait, do you think he should go to, like, not prison? You think he should go to prison? I don't, I mean, I, I don't know, man. That that situation, I I still don't know what the fuck really happened there. So I don't, yeah, and, and I just don't, I don't believe that it was one night. That's the main thing that'll really be the differentiator. One night, one night is a different story than relationship, which I think most of us believe. Multiple pictures, that's a relationship, dog. Yeah. If not a relationship, it was like some type of situation. You know what I mean? Extended, like some extended shit like that. fling. Even if it was for yeah. the weekend or whatever the case may be. You spent three days with her and couldn't tell that she was 15 years old? 
not even that, bro. I just feel like if you're an NBA player, right, you know, and, and granted, he's young, right? So that's that. And we've seen NBA niggas do stupid shit. We've seen what Ant and Zion are doing. But, like, in a situation like Giddy, don't you vet the people you sleep with at a certain point? Like, nigga, I would have a whole team of niggas just, l- like, be like, hey, this is her name. Look her up. See what see what's up with this girl. This girl could be a murderer for all you know type shit. You know? And, and maybe he did do that, and maybe that's when he cut it off. But those photos are, like, that's not good, man. I'm, I'm sorry, but I, bro. It's, I, I know we have these perceptions of people, and we've got to stop because this just it's just proven again and again and again and again to not be true. Whether they be rapper, whether they be an actor, whether they be a uh, uh, athlete, those niggas are just as lazy as the niggas <laughs> who go to the club or the gas station right now. No, but you have more to lose, though. That's the thing. And you would think that they would perceive it that way, but their penis still leads them with their actions. And it's crazy because they have those people have even more power and more responsibility than like you and I do. But the way that they let their penis hand like handle their decision making, because I think a lot of us would agree, Jonathan Major should have left that woman a long time ago. I agree. A thousand percent agree. If he was really even when I heard that audio of the, the Coretta Scott stuff, like I was just like, man, what why was this not a sign right here to just get out of there, man? Man. But we, we we and again, that's something that I would think. I mean, if I if I was naive, I would think that Jason at the park would do is like stay with the bitch that's toxic because they love each other and you know, maybe he's that goes both ways too. Abusive relationships, toxic relationships, you know. Both sides, it's hard to leave. You I, know. And I get it. I, I do get it. But just acting as if, like, okay, Jason from the park, he's staying with her because the pussy good and she's down from whatever, whatever. Cool. Jonathan Majors, multimillionaire, can't leave because... No, yeah. Yeah, he should have left. Uh, 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 what, are we, like, what are we saying at that point? Like, legitimately, what are we saying at that point? So, I, I don't know. Men have more responsibility than I think. I know we love to push the... She was mid, too, bro. That's the shit that's crazy. And Shorty was not even fine. None of that shit, bro. And it's crazy. She not cooking. She not cleaning. She drunk, and she's mid, and she's white. Then it, you know, you know, I have that's a theory, right? Isn't that theory that like when niggas get with white shorties, they super mid? I don't even understand that, man. I don't. And then to find out like the and this is like dude talk for real, for real. But then to find out like his actual horizons was Nia Long, like or not Nia Long, Megan Good. Like you could have pulled Megan Good this whole time. <laughs> but, you settled, but that's what you went for like come on at that point i think but sometimes it does take and it's sad to say sometimes it takes niggas situations with certain people to realize damn this is just not for me but the thing is i feel like after hearing that audio that should have been the the, the wake up moment and i'm sure they had that, that convo before which is why it led to that because she recorded it you know what i'm saying i'm sure they've had that convo before so it's just, and mind you, that was, um, I don't know if you saw, but that was during his, he had a business meeting for Loki. And that's when she, she recorded oh, that's that. when she, oh, see. Came in drunk and stuff. Like that, right? How do you stay with that as a man? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. it it's just, it's ridiculous, bro. Again, at, at that point, again, I, I can, we can give women blame. We can, we truly can. We can give women blame all they want. At that point, I'm looking at Jonathan Majors for having poor penis management. If you're telling me that she... Don't you think that also applies to women, too, for, like, the abuse? We're not doing a channel together. I'm not doing any more group channels. Stop it. Stop it. Um, They're talking to me? Yeah, they said they they have Souls and Sage. Are we doing Omar and Mustard next? No. Nah, nah. Nah. O.M.? No. Oh God. But... <laughs> Yo, you're so <laughs> no and, and again, I think that I think that women do have blame. I think that women do have blame. I, again, I think that I don't want to make it about women though, because I know we're trying to have a, a man thing. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just saying, like, cause you know, people use that argument for like victim blaming kinda, where they'll be like, You saw these signs like, like Chris Brown and Rihanna, right? Like obviously we know that was not their first incident. Like, uh, so like I would feel like if Rihanna, if you're seeing this guy as got a history of violence with you, y'all are getting physical a lot. At a certain point, when do you leave? 
You know what I'm saying? Doesn't that apply to those scenarios too? And women, men too, right? Because like there are men that get abused and they don't leave. Now, granted, it's a different type of culture for women that abuse men, but you get my point here. If you so don't, if you believe that to if you believe that women are more vulnerable, emotional, um, they think reckless, they do things you know out of love, et cetera, et cetera, then you you could give justification. <laughs> But if men are more logical, if men are more uh, uh, steadfast with their thinking, more stern or whatever the case may be, then that's where I have. All right. If they're if they're all these things, then when they make a bad decision, I have to take more more. I have to give them more blame in the bad decision making because we gave them more attributes in the logical, uh, uh, steadfast, stern, you know, all these things. If we give them all those a uh, 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 point in that category when a bad mm-hmm. thing happens to them i have to give them more blame critique yeah yeah because they because they were all this that and the third if john the majors uh uh is supposed to be this guy that understands what position he's in very thankful very humble etc cetera, etc cetera, he should understand to not let anything come in the way of his next chapters in life the next sets of steps and to be honest with you if he would have broke up with her Long, I talked to my girlfriend about this. Like, I, we had a conversation earlier this morning about even the small signs meaning something. I would tell my cousins if you have a woman playfully hitting you, you don't have like break up with her. There, there are situations, or these are situations where you should break up with her. It might seem playful, but when you get to the part where it's no longer playful, and you are spazzing out on her, I, I don't know what to say when. You know, later on down the line, you get in trouble. Like you, the writing was on the wall. Like I don't know. I really don't know. I really don't know. No, I, f- I feel you there. I-, I think a lot of this shit is just, you know, these toxic relationships is hard. You know, I've been in a toxic relationship. It's not easy to just get up and leave because the the lows are bad, but those highs, it be hidden like crack in the eighties. You know what I'm saying? So. That's how it is. I think that's just how it was. But me personally, I, you know, I don't I don't deal with white women, honestly. I'm just be honest with you. I, I don't do that. I don't do that shit, man. I'm sorry. And there's a reason for that. Like, and people that deny, like we were in that space, people that deny the elements of race in that case, I think it's a little obtuse, personally. I think you're denying the obvious. I'm not saying race was everything, but it does matter. Even just Gender too, like the men and women dynamic. It, if we can acknowledge that matters, <laughs> I don't see how you can't acknowledge that race didn't play a fact, especially his arrest, because it doesn't make sense for him to beat her up in the car, then call the police the next morning. Not saying it, that doesn't happen, but c- considering we know he was very conscious about being a black man with a white woman, that's not consistent with how he acts. Well, so, so. from my from my understanding, and, and Joe Budden had clarified this. Uh, and he said it again on an older. He said it on an older podcast, but clarified this for me. In New York City, um, if you get called in for a, a DV situation as a police yeah. officer, somebody has to go. You to jail. You have to arrest. Yeah. yeah, somebody has to go to jail. Um, and the the but it I, wasn't a domestic thing. That's the thing. It was a suicide call. But I think that's they, what's crazy. I think they. I guess at some point they determined that it was domestic. That's the only reason why he would have. Went to jail and she didn't go to. Uh, uh, well, I think she. I guess you go to a hospital or whatever the case may be. But at some point, it became a, a DV sort of situation. You went from one webcam to the next webcam. What the hell is this nigga got going on? That shit dying, my nigga. You need a dummy battery so bad. I do, bro. I won't even lie, man. It's in my bathroom. Yeah, you need a dummy battery. Too Let me b- just leave it like. That now. But I. This li- but it is what it is. When when there's a there's a situation of domestic, you know, violence or whatever the case may be, you you have to um somebody's got to get arrested. And the idea, I was listening to somebody on YouTube talk about this, the idea that it's supposed to um you know, encourage people to speak, but in reality, it it discourages people to speak about their situations. Because there could be a situation where, you know, I call because we're arguing or somebody calls because we're arguing, but it's not really that serious. Um, and it's not taking it to that extent. 
but um, if I call these people, they're going to make an arrest and it's going to become a pattern and it's going to become a thing. And if I don't want to deal with that, then I just don't call until the day where it, now it's just over the top and we could have stopped it a long time ago. So that is a bad, pre- that's a bad law in New York, but I mean, I mean, he chose to live. I hate to say it, but I, you chose to live there. I, hey, I was just finna say it. I do. I hate to be that guy too. I hate to tell somebody to just uproot them from themselves. But even I'm gonna tell you this too. In the, in the conversation of like, I mean, these are the decisions people have to make. I know life sucks, but I'm not gonna have too much sympathy for people that can uproot themselves easily. Uh, we had that conversation when Roe v. Wade's decision came out. My girlfriend was like, Ooh, I, she was wow. like, yeah, no, she, <laughs> but she was like, I ain't gonna lie, I'm pro. Aberration. I'm pro ending that. And if Georgia comes She's down pro life? No, pro choice. Okay. So but she was okay. like, if I come if, if Georgia comes with like an extremely harsh punishment for you know this situation, these circumstances, I would seriously move. But the thing is though, right, when it comes to these abortion convos, and this is the reason why. I feel like I just don't think they're very genuine in how they argue it, right? Like, like if I was a pro-life, because I'm pro-choice, right? But if I was a pro-lifer and I hear the go-to arguments people use about like rape victims, I could easily just say most people that get abortions are not rape victims. I believe like, I don't know the percentage, but I think it's like almost over 95 or something of uh, uh, abortions are just due to inconvenience, right? And I do think, at least I'd hope sensible people that are pro-choice or are pro-life, they understand the, the they, perspective they of a rape though. victim. They don't though. I mean, if, if they don't, then like, they're stupid. But like, there are people that are pro-life that understand the, the circumstances of a rape victim. You could easily just say, okay, we'll change it for them. What about the, uh, the rest? Because the majority are not doing that. But, you see, know what I'm but see, in the conversation, though, in, in action, and you would think that's the case in the conversation, they're not excusing that. And they're also there are a couple there are a couple of cases right now um, where miscarriages, women who have had miscarriages in their homes and in their toilets are on trial for. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let me see if I can pull Is it. Is happening in the South? Uh, yeah. I, I think of it's course. happening where you live. Of course. No, I, I know Texas. I don't, I don't even really pay attention. Greg Abbott is just. I don't even know if you know about him, but that yeah. nigga is just like one of the worst governors I've ever seen. Um, I don't fuck with that like, that nigga. Wheelchair for life, fuck that nigga. Um, and there's a there's a plethora of articles that I could pull up on this. I'll just pull up the Google search. Um, she was jailed for losing a pregnancy. Uh, this is about wow. that. Uh, there's an Alabama one would make some. But these are older ones. But if I go to news, I'm pretty sure. I mean, this isn't even that old. This is 2022, yeah, 23. Yeah. yeah. Um, not miscarriage of justice. Criminally charged after miscarriage. This is a day ago. Oh, man. Um, and they're black women, too. Uh, where's the other ones? There's a couple other ones that I saw. And I, I'll keep looking. But oh, this is sad. Some of these situations are. Look at this. Alabama. Alabama but GOP to be fair, GOP though, Omar, right? Because because mm-hmm. I can play because, like I said, I can play devil's advocate because I I want people to I want I'm pro choice, right? Like the arguments people use, <clears throat> they should be very very airtight. My response to that, if I was pro life, would be: Aren't these aberrations? These are not normal situations. Like this doesn't happen to most people that uh, get abortions or whatever, right? So, so wouldn't like because these scenarios, I didn't know about this honestly. I didn't know this was even. I was like, miscarriages happen more more often. Miscarriages, I know, but like, I know miscarriages are very common. But I'm talking about like people being charged for that. I didn't Mm. know that was even a thing. So if you if I was pro life, I could just be like, this is not normal. Like you know, I'm saying. So, like, if I if you're pro choice, or what would be the response then? If if they're willing to concede on some of these points then I think that they would be willing to have a more constructive argument. But I think mm-hmm. on both sides, you know, always there's people that are like loud and they're just too staunchly on both sides to never meet in the middle. Loud and wrong. But then we could probably have more of a conversation about what needs to be in the middle and determined. 
So then you would have a better conversation about like, okay, well, why why should women be able to do this at six weeks or at, you know what I'm saying, at these different yeah. benchmarks? But we can't even get there because, you know, the pro, and this is my perspective as a pro-life person. The pro-life people are like, oh, what happens when, you know, somebody has a miscarriage uh, in their home, in their toilet or whatever, and then, you know, they they get charged with that. Oh, well, that's still murder of a bit. Like, we can't get past that. If we can't get past that, we can't even get to a middle ground. So uh, do you think more most pro-lifers are kind of extreme? I think so. I think so. Mm. I don't know, because, like, even, like, most people I know that are pro-life, it's more so just a religious thing, right? Now, me, I don't think that's religious. As a Christian, I don't, th that's not biblical, I mean, personally. Uh, but... I don't know. I don't know. Like the, those convos, I just feel like a lot of times people that are pro-choice pick arguments that, that can be like easily debunked. If I was a pro-lifer, right? Because like, because I used to be pro-life. Like back then, you know, niggas be saying I'm misogynist and conservative and shit. Now, <laughs> nigga, back in like high school, before I really started experiencing re real life shit, I was so conservative on damn near everything. And now, like, that I've gotten older and my eyes have opened, you know, and I've started having sex, I guess. <laughs> I understand, like, pro-life and pro-choice and shit. So, and I'm not a woman. That's another thing. Uh, so thing. I think that's the biggest thing. I ain't going to lie to you. I, I don't know. You think So you don't think men should have a say, right? Um, nah, I, I ain't going to lie. It, it doesn't matter. It's not, it's not my body. Um, the way that people are obtuse about it, I would love to think that even if if you had a pro-choice stance and you could give some grace in some areas, like, you know, not shouts out to him, but shouts out to Brian Kemp for even allowing six weeks in Georgia up to six weeks. Now, six weeks is a very short time, but at least he allowed That's six month, weeks, though, you know, but even I mean, but, but when a woman finds out that she's pregnant, usually the. Oh, yeah, yeah, show, yeah, 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 yeah. Till. So but I, I mean, so the six weeks thing is it's fine. It's better than some of these people that are just like, hey, none of it. And if it's a, it's a if it's a miscarriage, you're going in jail and you're being tried to be tried for murder. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> so but to, to think that there would be some more pro choice people who are understanding and willing to have a conversation, it would be nice. It really would be nice. However, that's truly just not the case. Like, that is 100% just not the case. I wish it were, but if people were willing to meet in the middle more, then I think we'd be able to meet, have a middle ground conversation about, like, okay, what is too long? Are we going to allow anything, et cetera, et cetera? But we just we just can't, man. Yeah, I mean, like, these, these convos, it, it, it's rough. Well, do you think it's bad? Because you said men shouldn't have a say. Do you think also the other way where, like, <clears throat> if a guy's like, hey, like, like some ant shit, like send a video type shit, like wrap that shit up. Like, you think that's bad too? It's like you, if you're not not pressuring, but you give your opinion, like, hey, I think you should get an abortion. Oh no, you can give your opinion. You can totally give your okay. opinion on the abortion. And if she if she wants to not go through with it, uh, there's channels that you can go through that will absolve you of responsibility of that child. So, if you want to do that, do. I that mean, as usually well. though, if you if you if you got money though. You gotta have that baby. I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, not necessarily. You can, you can. I, I hate this conversation from from those people's perspectives. And, and somebody sent you a. Uh, I'm not even talking about millionaires. I'm talking about, and I'm talking like if she goes through with having a baby, like absolving yourself, more than likely isn't an option. Why? Because I mean, like, let's say you got bread. I'm not talking about millionaires. Let's say you like six figure nigga, two hundred k, three hundred k, whatever. <clears throat> If that woman is, I assume she's not uh, up to your level financially, let's say she's average, 40, 50K a year. Like, more than likely, she's going to want some child support if you're not going to be involved. But depending depending on the state, most states, North Carolina is like one of the states that it's hardest in, like really one of the only states that's hardest in. After you miss a certain amount of child support. How you know that? Oh, I looked this up. I looked this up. After you, after you, after you, <laughs> um, what's it called? Miss so many child support payments, bring it to the courts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can petition for your parental rights to be taken from you. 
And therefore, you have oh, wow. no more rights for the child. But you can do that from like day one as well. Now, we can have a conversation about if she does want to do that or not. But if she doesn't want to do that, just miss enough child support payments. You might end up in a little bit of... <laughs> Don't you get arrested for that? Uh, not necessarily. There may be, depending on the state, there may be a warrant out for your arrest. Um, there I may, know Cali, they don't play around with that shit. They may put some levies on your, your wages or something like that. But it would still be a process to say, like, yo, your honor, I, I want to sign over my parental rights. And you can sit there and beg for the court, like, to do it. Um, and it can be up to the judge. The judge will make the decision. Hey, yeah, I ain't gonna lie if you don't want it, I'm not gonna make you. I'm not gonna force you to do it. You're done. But it's it's not about men. Men can get out of their parental rights. They just don't seek that option. And even even I in this conversation with somebody on the podcast, I brought this up, and I was like, yeah, you could just sign off your parental rights, but that means like you could never be in that child's life again, and you would have to be okay with that. Them. Ah, yeah. oh, no, ah, oh, no, 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 no. I need to be it. Nah. <laughs> what? What you mean? Why not? What well, get out of here? <laughs> if you're not if you're not gonna be in that baby's life from day one, I think she should have the ability to kick you out for forever. Well, yeah. I mean, what about like uh <clears throat> those niggas like like a deadbeat? <clears throat> like a deadbeat that leaves? Or what about like let's forget deadbeat because I ain't gonna lie, that's on you, but like a situation where the guy doesn't know because I think that happens a lot where like the woman will say the guy didn't want to be in, involved, but the, she, just, she just didn't tell the dude. Maybe because the dude was in prison or dudes, uh, whatever. She didn't like him, despite him, whatever. If it's a situation like that, that doesn't apply, right? Um, I don't necessarily know how often that happens. You're saying you're saying two people have sex. Like I go out tonight, I have sex with a woman, I get her pregnant. We don't speak again for the next. 13 whatever years. months yeah whatever the case may be and then all of a sudden she's got a baby but she never tells me and then i find out through the grapevine that i have a baby well maybe not through the grapevine the kid could find you well i guess that's grapevine but like uh not even like a situation just like that but like let's say she doesn't tell you until she needs to tell you type shit like let's say she pops up one day two, he's two years old or she and she's like hey by the way like remember that time we had sex this is the kid Oh, I mean, awesome after like after that. the DNA test, I mean, I would. I oh mean, yeah, you got to get that. Yeah, it would, yeah. It would depend on um, it would depend on the person, but yeah, I'm a hey, let's uh, I, I want to <laughs> be in this child's life, obviously, and and yeah. I don't think she should. I don't at that point, especially if she's coming to me asking me for money, I don't think she would have any rebuttal to that. I don't think so. You said she wouldn't have rebuttal, or the guy? The, no, she the 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 woman. I don't think she would have any rebuttal, like. She might have not been trying to include me in the child's life, and then now she's trying to include me in the child's life. I don't think she would have any rebuttal to that. Mm. I feel that, yeah. That's but I do I think. think that happens a couple, like a lot often than people don't people know. Usually, though, I think that most of the time that happens is the guy's in prison or something. Like it's just a bad scenario, so she just doesn't tell the nigga. Yeah, and at that beat, at that point, you a deadbeat anyway. I'm just talking about the nigga. Like, <laughs> <laughs> can't be a deadbeat in jail. Well, I guess, I guess you can. can. Why you in yeah. jail? You knew you had a kid on the way. What if he didn't know? You feel me? Why you putting yourself in jail, man? You a deadbeat. <laughs> I mean, I agree with that, but deadbeat, I mean, it doesn't matter. You in jail. I don't even care. Yeah, okay, we're not caping for no deadbeat ass nigga. Um, okay. This was fun. Oh, Persian Fear sent 45 bits to say, uh, Mustard, if a man killed a woman in the Bible who was pregnant, his punishment was worse because he took both lives. Read your Bible before you open your mouth respectfully. I swear to God, that's what he said. What is he talking about, though? I'm. Mean, what is he, the abortion? What's he referring to? He said abortion's not in the Bible or something like that. Oh no, I'm t- nigga. That's not what I was referring to, man. I was talking about <clears throat> people that are pro-choice uh, or pro-life that are like saying it's a uh, it's, co- it's considered murder. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, if you kill a pregnant woman in the Bible, like I, I know about that verse, but like there also are arguments for people that say, hey, it's not considered a life. What's what's the eight, what's the time that people say it's not a life? Uh it depends on who you're asking, but some say first trimester, uh, some say two trimesters. Like it just depends on who you ask. That, that's that's what I'm talking about. Obviously, when you pass a certain time period, that's different. You know, and you know, yeah. 
<clears throat> niggas talking about some religious shit. Omar sent that shit himself, bro. Omar trying to set a nigga up, man. I didn't send that. That's right here. <laughs> that's that's Let me see. That's literally hold on. I'll pull it up. I'll pull it up on uh on the screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh why is it not here on the on the stream yard? Shouldn't the comments be here? Nah, the comments aren't gonna be on stream yard. Stream yard doesn't have it set up like that. That says must be <laughs> for 45 bits. If a man killed a woman in the Bible who was pregnant, his punishment was worse because he took both lives. Read your Bible before you open your mouth, respectfully. Nah, that's crazy. Nigga challenging my Bible knowledge. Trying to have a Bible off. Uh, hey, hey, man. Hey, that's uh... <laughs> Omar, you also got to give me the details of that little setup shit. What is that? What you mean? It's the dashboard. It's the dashboard for Twitch. No, the background setup, nigga. Like, what is the the the, the lights and oh, shit? Oh, the lights. Yeah, the lights and the what is the other the rails? What is that? Oh, I built this. You you made that? Yeah, I made this. Like, oh, with, you... with my bare hands, I'm, I'm being dead ass too. It's it's so, it's some little uh, I can't even remember what they call this black thing, but that's like four pieces of wood on the top, two on the top, two on the bottom from Home Depot, and then some LED some strips. Star Wars vibes. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Real, real. And some LED strips on the inside. Um, I can change the lighting if I wanted to. Let me see. I got a remote? Mm-hmm. It's an app on the phone. Mm, I can have it to where it plays to music. Mm. That is Christmas, I believe. That's oh, they're separate. Christmas. They're not together type thing? I can make them together. I can link them together uh, if I wanted oh, okay. to, but Right now they're separate. That's, that's, why, that's what's up. It's a ghost. They can change. Co- oh my god, what the hell is that? Yeah, they can change colors and all that shit. They can interact with music. Um, hey, Omizi. Hey, Omizi. Mm-hmm. So as a member of the 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 less cute, let me see the tattoo though. Let me see what the tattoo is looking like. It's peeling right now. It's peeling. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Man. That shit hurt. Um, uh, I'm not gonna lie. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I see it. It's looking clean. No, I need How long is it going to take before it gets like like clear and shit? She said like it could take a, she was like it could take a month. It could take 2 months. I don't know. Me. And you not with, you got your ears pierced? Hell no. Hell no. So you not with the piercings but you with the tats? I'm not even with the tats. They hit a sub goal. Oh, nigga, sub goal for the tat for the rest of your life though is, is wild. Hey man, it's on my body. It's it's on Would my you ever body. get it removed? Uh nah, it's there now. Fuck it, right? It's permanent, permanent. Well, you know, you know, it's on, it's on me, it's in me type shit. In you is is wild. It's literally in your skin. Ain't a tattoo in your skin? I mean, when you, <laughs> I guess yeah, I guess yeah. you're right. The tattoo is in your skin, literally in your skin. Um, when are you when are you done with school? Uh, I mean, honestly, right now because I took a semester off. I plan to honestly take another semester off. Oh, why? Because, like, with journalism, you know, I've just, you know, I, I value school. Don't get me wrong. I, I understand the value of a degree. <clears throat> but for me, in particular, with journalism, that major, because I've built so many connections outside of school and through school as well, I don't, I'm just not in a rush for that degree right now, honestly. There's other things I want to pursue first um, because the de- I'm not going to lie. Even just doing content and school, um, because I also double major in journalism and political science. Uh, it's hard, man. It's hard, at least for me. Um, and it's mainly because I'm more so almost done with the journalism degree. And then the political science, that shit is just, it, it's a lot, man. I'm sorry. It, it really is. Especially considering like, I, like I'm considering going to law school as well after school. Um, and I could go to law school. Um, without the degree, like I could just sign up for it and take the LSAT and all that. But you know, that's just an option. Not that's not like a permanent thing for sure. Um, but what's up? Finish, are you looking like that? Finish, finish, just, finish. just, just, just do it. How many? How many more credits you got? Uh, I have basically so five, about fifteen. Fifteen it's, more credits? And you talking about waiting? I mean. It's just like, bro, UH also, another thing I hate, because I go to University of Houston, they suck at media. Like, their their journalism program is trash. And you know the school. 
the school UH football team, they just joined the Big 12. The basketball team, they're always in like Final Four or Sweet 16, Elite Eight, whatever. And they do very well. You know, they had Jarris Walker, Quentin Grimes, Jarris Sampson, the coach. And their media team is just trash. Like, if I ever tell y'all some of the stories that I've gone through with that school and their media shit, you, you wouldn't believe it, man. It's just so bad. But what that got to do with you finishing, though? Like, because, nigga, like, it's discouraging. Like, going to school and seeing, like, because the whole point of journalism, the degree is also the, the journey because the connections you gain, right? But, like, if the school itself is not giving me those avenues, like, I'm also thinking about transferring to TSU, TSU Texas Southern, mm -hmm. right? And, like, they I had give opportunities like crazy, right? They got better media platform. All that. HBC, I ain't gonna lie. When it comes to media for HBCUs, they're a whole lot better than PWIs from what I've seen. At least the ones I see, the PWIs I see. Um, But, yeah, it, it is what it is, honestly. I think... Because I think if you transfer at the stage that you're at right now, you would be going down. Y'all, you would have more fit classes to finish. I think finish, and then you could make a decision about what you want to do after. And I think it, it'll be easier uh, in a shorter time uh, to make, or shorter time that you would have to finish after you've already finished this one. But right now, you're just delaying this smaller barrier of entry. Uh, well, that's just for the, the journalism degree, though, right? Yeah. I still have like a lot for my political science shit. Like I won't even lie to you. Yeah, I think it, that that's probably gonna take me like in total, probably like two more years. Fin I, I know. I think you. I think you need to finish at least one of them. Uh, oh, I will. The journalism will get finished. And another thing, also money. That's another thing. Uh, schools, schools not cheap. You paying out of pocket? No, I mean I get grants and scholarships and stuff. Um, because you know, good grades, but also uh not even just that, but like transportation and you know, just other minor things like books and shit. Mm, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. I know you're a big advocate for graduating yeah, in I, school. I think that uh and I'll be tired, yeah. It just it'll change your it'll change everything. Especially when you get your first like job opportunity. Like and you can through the degree? Yeah, through the degree. Once you get your first job opportunity, it doesn't even necessarily have to be in your field, but just the idea of going from like, I don't know, fifteen dollars an hour, seventeen dollars an hour, twelve dollars an hour at a job to Oh shit, cardiac saying don't do it. Yeah, he's saying don't go to that school. <laughs> but to go to I like thought cardiac goes to UH though. No, what he is goes going to on here? Southern, if I'm not mistaken. Southern? Oh. But so he a he he a, he a hot girl. Oh my god. To go to to go to fifty k, sixty k, seventy k, um, yeah, I I think that it it's just it's just life changing, and then then the ability to have more flexibility to do things, especially if you don't get caught up with like having golden handcuffs, um, mm -hmm. from like what a what a what more money could provide you, like I, I and you know it's also my bad I didn't no, cut you off, but like it's also like. Cause you know journalism is one of the majors, and you know I'm Nigerian, <clears throat> so like, there's like no support. Like obviously my mom supports me, my dad so and so, but like outside of them two, anytime I run into any like family members or family friends, and they ask me what my major is, and I lead off with journalism, it's like no support. You know what I'm saying? And it, it gets some. It's kind of discouraging, but I, over time you kind of just accept Nigerians. They don't look at um, not even just Nigerians, immigrants, because B souls I think went through the same thing, similar things. But like, if you're not majoring in anything medical related, engineering, law, you know, they don't care. <laughs> like they just don't care. They don't think it's gonna bring uh, money. They don't think it's gonna bring income. They think you're wasting your time. You know, and I get it because. To immigrants, they they're all about financial security, you know. And I'm not gonna lie, journalism doesn't give you financial security off rip. Even though I think if you do things like journalism or I'm not gonna lie, art, art majoring in art is kind of wild to me. But you know, yeah, I'm sorry, no disrespect to those niggas, but like if you major in something like journalism, I feel like you're doing it for the passion and the love of it, 
you know and i feel like you can make good money if you really put in the work you can make good money man i'm sorry i hate when people act like you can't you can you know think, obviously you're not making six figures off rip but you know and i think i think that that but that goes for anything and so that's that's people telling people like oh you can't make money i lie, no, no no not that art shit though no but you can't why can't you no, you can but like you don't gotta go to school for that i'm sorry like but it's or at least don't but, go to a normal school. Go to art school. Well, let me but let me say this: like everybody believes that you graduate and then you pursue the field that in which you're in to get the money, um, and there are ways to do that too with the field. But like, if you wanted to be a if you wanted to make money, get the degree, go be like a manager at a department store. Most people don't even realize the managers at the department stores make seventy, eighty. 90 mm -hmm. yeah. hundred thousand dollars you can work your way up higher than that you can own a store eventually if you keep doing that you could you could go crazy with with what like you can do uh with but the barrier of entry is just a degree and those people that tell you otherwise are literally either people who don't have a degree or they're outliers to the situation like the statistics are right there if you have a degree you will be more successful you will be more financially stable but it's a scam though omar it's not it's not <laughs> It's not. I can't. Right. Even. I mean, didn't uh, what is it? Didn't, I think it was Playback that made a video about it, right? That said it was a scam. <laughs> and and you know it's crazy they've slightly changed their tune on it, but also like, again, the statistics speak for themselves. The life experience speaks for themselves. I can tell people what I've made before school. I made seventeen an hour times uh uh, no 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 seventeen an hour times forty hours, which is a week times fifty two. I made thirty five thousand dollars. Yeah, and this is pretax. This is if I worked all forty hours a week, which I didn't. But this is pre taxes. <laughs> now, I make like triple that now. Oh, so you a six figure nigga? I mean, I that's that. That's that. That's that. That's that. Uh, that Tesla money. But I also own. Let's keep it a buck. So let's not get a mistake. <laughs> You, know you own or you go on come on now come on now you're my body but no ultimately like the the fact that you yeah people just don't people it's like again every everything um if people are saying it too much it's probably just not real everything isn't what these niggas are saying like i just i, I think that they discourage you just so you can end up in similar situations like them it's, it's it's nasty work but it is what it is the reality a lot of people need to go back to school I, i'd be encouraging people i talked to somebody today me yeah you chasing call center job to call center job i promise you if you just finish your schooling you'll be a-okay yeah yeah i agree with that and, and and you know like when it comes to school like I think the reason people like discourage it is because they just don't got the discipline to finish and i fall under that category too because i, I should have been graduated by now but you know like i'm not gonna give up because like i feel like when you get to a certain point especially where i'm at right now giving up just feels like you're you're selling yourself short you know what i'm saying and uh i, I think always that last year or so is always like the, the hardest because you gotta like motivate yourself to keep doing the same shit over and over and over you're taking some of these classes now thankfully for me journalism classes i actually like them because i think they're very interactive they have to be interactive you know um, but like that applies to anybody in your major. I feel like if you're a comm sci major, if you're an engineer, whatever it is, you got to enjoy those classes. If you don't, you're doing yourself a disservice. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, what you mean? <laughs> I didn't necessarily enjoy them. I don't, I don't think that there's any school that I, I mean, you didn't enjoy your classes. No, nah, not really. I mean, just because they don't traditional schooling is ass. Like I, I just, it was like <laughs> follow along till we get to the end. So I didn't necessarily enjoy class, but I enjoyed the, the idea that after this, I'll be financially stable. So did you want to do, what's your major again, comp side? Mm -hmm. Did you want to do that because you liked it or did you do it for the bread? I Googled it for the bread. Now I'm interested, <laughs> I'm interested in computer science. Like I'm interested in the concepts. I'm interested in problem solving. I'm interested in like, you know, Hey, this thing is broken. But the idea of making something work, I'm interested in it. Like, that's very mm -hmm. interesting. Um, but I Googled it, and this was going to make you X amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. So I did that. Like, that's what I did. Like, I just, just the reality <laughs> of it. And 
computer science has a lot of things that I wouldn't be good at because I would be I would be bad at math. Like I, I would like historically speaking, I'm not the best at math. I'm not shit at math, but I'm not the best at math. Math is not like a strong suit. It's not something that I love. Um, That's a tough thing to be ba- not great at, though. It is. For comp side. It is. But I, I hey, figure out how to do this math or don't make this money. You know, it's crazy. I used to be a, uh, for the first like three years of college, two, three years of college, I was a, uh, not two, three years, first year or two of college, I was a cybersecurity major. I hated it. I hated it so much. Like, cause it was also under business, right? And I had to take these marketing classes, accounting classes. I hated those classes. And like, when I finally changed my major, it was cause I had a convo with one of my friends and she was just like, Nigga, you you love sports. Like I hardly ever hear you talk about cybersecurity shit. And I'm like, well, I mean, the bread is there. And UTSA, which is the school I used to go to, was number one in cybersecurity in the nation. So I just went with that. And like she was like, bro, do something that you like. You know what I'm saying? Like, you already got a channel, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. You can translate that. Which then I was like, okay, I might as well do journalism. And I then I added I tacked on political science because law is also something else. i've also thought about getting into like the law aspect of journalism so uh people, yeah people we say that and not well there's something wrong with that in my opinion like there's room for you to do what you want however one i think you already found it like you, you you're doing youtube so you already found like hey this is a lane for me to do what i want but what's gonna bona fide guarantee me to get some bread and that should be or should have been, um, you know that 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 should be slash should have been. Hey, let me let me pursue cybersecurity, or let me mm-hmm. pursue this high paying thing. <clears throat> and then when I get off or on the weekends, I have this creative outlet in which I could do it. I seen somebody in the chat wrote it. If I could have started over, I would have went into like, uh, 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 not it's not quantum mechanics, but just quantitative analysis and been in like you know, the big banking industry and made like a bunch of different monies predicting stocks and stuff like that. I would have hated it because I would have truly been around numbers and not customers and stuff like that. However, mm-hmm. I cash my paycheck, I come <laughs> home, and I can get on YouTube and drop the soundboard. He's on fire. I can drop the soundboard. I can make YouTube videos. I can you know what but I'm But that's saying? the thing though, you have that avenue. Right? You what to those no, 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 not me. I'm not talking about me, but I'm talking for others, right? They don't got that avenue. Oh, you got to find it. You got to find I didn't have it. I created it. You got to find mm-hmm. it. It found me through other people, but you have to find, and I think that this exists in anything. I, I very rarely believe that, you, well, not even very rarely. I, I, I still wholeheartedly stick by this. You should not monetize the thing that you're passionate about or something that you love to do. Because what happens is, You'll fall out of love with it, and it'll be more. Especially when you start making money, you'll fall out of love with it, and it'll be more about making the money. You won't yeah. be able to get to do what you do. And we talked about that with like Rusty. Like Rusty might want to make a, a video about the Minnesota Timberwolves. <laughs> That's gonna get him a ten out of ten. But he knows if he makes a LeBron video, which he probably doesn't want to do, it's gonna get him a one out of ten. So now you're yeah. compromising, like doing what you want to do. I, I've had friends that have backed out of entrepreneurship for that exact reason. Yeah, I was tired of just doing one type of makeup. One I almost type hate of that word now, though. I hate it too. That I, I do. I, I have friends that oh, I don't. You know, I got tired of making one type of wig or you know st- stitching one type of thing, like making one type of cake. Like it, you you take the passion out of it, but you got to keep doing it because you got these golden handcuffs now. You make that one cake, it'll get you forty dollars a cake. You make any other mm-hmm. cake, you might experiment and fuck around and you might lose money. But yeah. if you pass why I stay out of do it. Uh, that, that's that's one of the reasons why I try to like I stay in basketball discourse, but I stay out of certain conversations. Cause it almost kills the passion of it. Right. Cause like even with YouTube, right? There are times because I've been slacking a lot lately, but there are times where I purposely like just don't want to drop videos because one, it feels like a job. And also it gets to the point where now like niggas are so analytical 
And if I don't talk about the PR of a nigga right, the right way or their on off fucking box plus minus, like, nigga, I don't care about that shit. Like, niggas will sit there and tell me Reggie Miller led so and so. I don't care, nigga. He can't dribble. That shit just don't move me. You know what I'm saying? So, like, sometimes, like, and it's not just basketball, it applies to all things. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes because there's, there are nuances, like YouTube. When I first started doing YouTube videos, it was so simple upload your opinion, move on read the comments, whatever. Now it's like, there's so many different nuances to how you make content. It's just so different now. It's so different. And and like, I start to feel like those old people when we was growing up, that things are changing around them and they don't like it. And then the young niggas are just like, you're just old. You know what I'm saying? Like my brother, he's 14, just turned 14 not too long ago. Nigga be telling me I'm old all the time off for like the most basic shit. I'll listen to Lil Wayne. Nigga be like, damn, nigga, you're old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, and like now Lil Wayne is considered old school shit. You know what I'm saying? But that's which it is. It, well, it is. But but that's why I that's why I'm <laughs> saying, like, if you if you monetize the because I it's great that it brings money in, but the fact that you monetize something that you love and are passionate about, I'm t- I, it, the joy will get sucked out of it because of just the depths that you have to go. So I'm I'm telling folks for the for Did the, that apply to like Stephen A. Smith too? I think so. I think oh well, but that's why Stephen A. Smith created his own show on YouTube. So we can talk about whatever oh, he yeah. wants to do. He created yeah. a different app. I actually think his show it. is much better than first take, like by far. But it's because he doesn't have to be robotic and make sure I know he put on that facade. Oh, I talk about whatever I want. No, you don't, nigga. <laughs> you talk about what's written down on that piece of paper. It is talking about his show, or you talking about first? No, I'm take? talking about first take because he'll go on these platforms and be like, you know, I got more control over what's being said. Da, 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 da. No, you don't. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he has input, though. He does. If they want to, yeah. if he don't want to talk about LeBron, but they want to talk about LeBron. Oh, they got to talk about LeBron. All right then. <laughs> they All they right got then. to. I mean, to some degree, he doesn't have control over certain things, right? But like. And it's the same thing with the Malika shit that I was telling y'all. They have input on... No, I'm not talking about like when they report like crimes. Forget that. But they have input on the things they talk about to some degree. Especially when you're the face of the show. Like Stephen A. Forget face of the show. Stephen A. Smith is the face of ESPN. Yeah. Like if Stephen A. Smith, God forbid, dropped dead today, ESPN is cooked. You know, the only thing that's really saving them is that Disney tie. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I think that, um, again, but again, I think that's why he created his own show so he can talk about the Latinas, he can talk <laughs> about the Paws, yeah, he can talk about whoever. But in the in the nasty, again, the nasty thing is though, when 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 you only can talk about that, I know he gets tired of talking. I mean, if he's on the the radio show, then First Take, then ESPN afterwards, then NBA Tonight, the Countdown, all these different things, oh, man. Yeah, I swear he's gonna get he gets tired. But now I can see, you see the bags. You can see him. But now they've all created Shannon Sharp, even he's created everybody's created their own lane in which they can talk about whatever they want to. Um, mm-hmm. because it just gives it's it's reinvigorated them. And I just see too many people who have done the entrepreneurial endeavors um just get burnt out or they're not doing what they thought they would be doing and they're having to shift or whatever the case may be. So so now I would even go as far as to say um, cause somebody told me today they wanted to be an esthetician. I'm like, man, get the get the job first on the weekends. <laughs> for real, on the weekends, if you were like, you should set a goal for yourself if you're making money in this. So like, if I was single and I was by myself, I would have it to be where like, all right, my my YouTube YouTube is gonna pay my rent. YouTube, mm-hmm. that's that's what I'm working for when it comes to YouTube. Other than that, it needs to come from my job. Now, if it explodes and booms to some other heights and levels and stuff like that, like, oh, yeah, round of applause for me. <laughs> like, that's great. But my goal is to have YouTube pay for my rent. Anything else, I would be greedy. I would be miserable. I would be pushing myself to limits and bounds that I really don't want to. My my life balance would be off. Um, mm-hmm. I would have to be missing family time, watching games, et cetera, et cetera, in order to get this YouTube shit off. 
Um, and I will be making content about stuff that I don't care about. There's like, let me see there. I go on my channel right now. There's hella stuff that I just didn't care to talk about. It wasn't in the plans to talk about it. Hell, you even you even said it about the um the 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 when when I said uh don't cover cases and you were like oh, the Diddy shit. The Diddy shit. I was thinking to myself, oh man, I really don't want to talk about this, but it's here, so I'm gonna talk about it. And then I can actually believe that because that I don't that Diddy shit is just it wasn't, but it, I, I really didn't even have like an opinion on it, to be honest with you. But because I said yeah, something either. about it, ah, oh, shit, I guess I got to make a clip out of this now and then upload the clip and then it'll do, it'll do fairly well. Oh, so well. you, you made, you did a stream and that was a clip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I get what you're and saying. And I'm trying to see if I even, did I even upload <clears throat> that clip? Yeah, I did upload that clip. But it was 17 minutes. Most of it was me reading what happened in the in, in the in the reporting. Me, yeah, this was crazy as fuck. Like this shit is crazy. But I knew it would also be <laughs> decent. But the only reason why I would do that, and same way I feel about like playback and all these a lot of these channels, the only reason why you do some of these things is because you know, monetarily speaking, it's gonna be good for you. Mm -hmm. That's just the reality of the situation. So. I would, I would never, I would advise people to stay the hell away from making content or doing your passion as a career. You're gonna be Honestly, and I agree because like even like you were talking about like the Shannon Sharp, Stephen A. shit, like their other sh shows or whatever. I feel the same way with like when I do like because I I recently did some streams on Twitch and even like my second channel. It don't even got the motion in my main channel, but I love doing those shits way more. Like. My second channel, I'll review like a Marvel movie or, you know, uh, talk about Dragon Ball Z anime, whatever. And I just have more fun. But I know it don't got the motion of the main channel. So I got to stick with, I got to prioritize the main channel over it. Now, granted, if the second channel were to take off today, like you said, and start paying my rent, <laughs> fuck the main channel. I'll, I'll, I'll not fully abandon it, but you already know. That's gonna be on the back burner. I should. I'll take a whole year off that month. Look at Low. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I, 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 think I don't know when the last time Low dropped the video. But I think if if we asked him too, he would say that like this is a better way for me to have fun. Um, mm -hmm. you know, making content like it's not this whole I got to sit down, write scripts, and do all that. No, he's watching. He's watching games. He's streaming. He's making money while he streams, and that's a better way, more enjoyable way for him to make content. Exactly. I don't know. I'm, I'm and bro, not. I'm telling you, man. Like another thing that I hate about making NBA content, a nigga will pull up a take of yours that you don't even remember you made, and they'll be like, "Nigga, but didn't you say this?" Like, or they'll pull up a thumbnail that was obviously to get a nigga to click on the video, and they'll be like, "But didn't you say this?" I'm like, "My nigga, did you even watch the video?" I actually defended this nigga, and it's like niggas don't like the community is just it's whatever. Niggas just lame. That's why you gotta find niggas you. need to get some bitches. Oh my god! Honestly, I, I I think, bro, I'm so serious, bro. I think it when you see certain niggas in life, it it's very clear that like you just don't get bitches, and because when you do get bitches, like, or you got a shorty in your life, you don't care about certain things. Like even that Jonathan Owen shit, it's clear those women are miserable and they're single. I saw someone say she should divorce him and shit. I'm like divorce him <laughs> over a pivot interview with ryan clark like that she she's sitting there lap. i'm like man y'all are miserable y'all are sad go on get a job all, all all those are all those are single women all those are women who can't keep a relationship for more than like three months <laughs> so uh, obviously they want her to be a part of the misery team like they are, but it really doesn't even have to be. So we saw a video between to, you and Oh yeah, it doesn't even have to be like Beyonce that. thing. Like I remember when Beyonce said, I don't know if you remember that quote where she was like, Jay Z taught me how to be a woman or helped me become a woman. And so many people were mad. They were like, Oh, he cheated. This is horrible. And I think that was even an old quote before the whole salon shit happened, right? Where he cheated. But like this was an old video, and niggas were so mad, they were so furious. I was like, how y'all mad at her for saying her husband helped her become like a woman? It's her husband. I'm like, y'all niggas are just sad, bro. Y'all need a job. And like, it's the same shit with that offset and uh, Cardi B shit just now, 
where people were breaking down their relationship in TikToks, you know? And to be fair, it's different when you react to it, like, with the content you make. But when niggas are sitting there like, okay, in January, this happened. The whole timeline March, type happened. shit? The timeline. I'm like, nigga, don't y'all have jobs? Like, McDonald's is across the street hiring right now. Get a job. But the man. answer the, the answer is wholeheartedly no. Whole fucking heartedly no. <laughs> nah, um, niggas is funny, bro. Okay, let's go ahead and end this since I lost my debate. I'm going to go eat some ramen noodles and cry. 1-0, bro. 1-0. Oh, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Mustard. Young Mustard. Hey, we're going to get on OM. This Was it OM or MO or MO? No. Um, this is nasty. <laughs> this is so gross. Um, we'll see you on the Twitter spaces. Uh, I, for those that are on my stream, I'm not going to lie. I'm not sleepy, so I might hop back on here later. Just put my girlfriend to sleep. I might hop back on here later. And then we'll set up the rebuild for the Pistons because, oh, brother. Put her to sleep. I, I'm going to literally tuck her into bed and then. Oh, I thought you meant like on some, some Chris oh, Brown shit. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. <laughs> okay. Bye, mustard. Bye, 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 mustard. <laughs> ah! Oh, man, I bro. Can't stand you. Hit Leaf Studio. Bye. Um, listen, Chatterinos. Listen, Chatterinos. Oh, shit. Wrong button, wrong button, wrong button, wrong button. Uh, what the fuck was I going to say? Oh, I should have hit record on StreamYard. That probably would have been better, but I'm going to record that. I'm going to download the VOD. Um, we did get a lot of subs this stream. I'm proud of y'all. We did get a lot of subs this stream. Shouts out to Heat Culture for resubbing. Shouts out to Typhoon for resubbing. Shouts out to DJ Sean for gifting a sub. Uh, shouts out to 2K's betting account for resubbing. He's on fire. Shouts out to Focam for resubbing. He's on fire. Shouts out to NBA Addictive TV Gaming. Uh, what is that? A gifted sub and then another gifted sub. Shouts out to V Simplex. Bang. And that's why, because it just makes sense. It just makes sense. V Simplex came through with eleven subs. This is crazy. That that's absolutely insane. Hold on now, that's twelve subs. My bad. Twelve gifted subs. My bad. My bad. Shout out to African Stew for resubbing as well. Uh, Ghirardelli as well for reaching that three stream streak, and AK for reaching that three stream streak. Listen, chat. Yo, V Simplex might have a lot of subs. I ain't gonna lie. V Simplex got more than that. I'm looking at two more from V Simplex. He's on fire. Vicho also. Oh no, that was last night. I think that was last night. Um, yeah. If you are new to this, we got the emotes here. I think I'm gonna put this whole vod actually up on YouTube. I don't know. I really don't know yet. I really do not know. Um, but yeah. I like this. I thought I was. I thought I would have did better in the debates. I didn't think I actually did bad in the debates. I don't know what the hell happened. I truly do not know what the hell happened. That that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. This is one, two, three, four, five, uh, six. Hold on. Seven, what's seven plus 11? Seven plus 11 is 18 um, plus 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So we got 23 subs today. Dang, halfway to, halfway to the goal. It looks like we are coming back later on tonight. I ain't gonna lie. 23 subs today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're still going to shoot for that 50. We're not too far off from getting 50 in one stream uh, or in one day. We're not too far off from getting 50 in one day. Um, yeah, probably about a little bit later to do the to do the rebuild. Um, but 
with that being said, we're going to do some more 2K stuff. The whole clause did not hold well enough, which is okay. I thought I would have did better in the debates. I thought I did a good job in the debates. Maybe I didn't do too well in the debates. I don't know. I could be tripping. Um, but anyway, 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 without me beating around the bush too much longer, most likely, y'all know my body, most likely I will see y'all in a couple of hours. Um, let's go ahead and raid Sage Arena. Let's go ahead and raid the Sage Meister. Uh, TSO underscore Sage. But when I come back tonight, we'll get the 2K going. We will get the 2K going. I don't know how Sage, Sage is a monster. Yeah, I'm gonna have to start playing some Pokemon on stream. No cap. Uh, we will see you guys later on tonight. Appreciate you guys. I thank you. Bye, guys.